Christmas. Episode 2. It is Christmas Eve and everything has gone a bit wrong. Queen Thistle wrapped in a Christmas present. King Thistle trapped in a Christmas cracker. I'm the king! Get me out of here! And the wise old elf is stuck in a Christmas tree. Up for sale in a shop. How undignified. And there's big people everywhere. Wow! Look at all those big people! Shh! We must keep quiet. No problem. Pine elves are good at keeping quiet. And we're Pine Elves! Ah, shh! Stay hidden. Nanny, lots of the grown-ups seem to be missing. King Thistle, Queen Thistle, all the Pine Elves. And the wise old elf. Yes, it's not good. Hello? It's me, the wise old elf. Why are you whispering? Listen carefully. It's Christmas Eve. And tonight, Father Christmas will be delivering presents to the children of the world. It's my job to track him. Every year, I follow Father Christmas's journey and make sure he is OK. But this time, I seem to be a bit, um, stuck. So, someone else is going to have to do the tracking. Someone responsible. Me! I'll do it! Me! Me! OK, Danny Plum, but don't mess it up. Oh, big people walking this way! I'm really looking forward to a quiet family Christmas with no talk of fairies and elves. OK, Dad. Ooh, I like this Christmas tree. Yes, Lucy. Let's get that one. And we'll need some Christmas crackers. Oof! Let me out of this Christmas cracker! Let me out! Oh, no! Where to now? So, where exactly is this top-secret elf command tracking centre? In the great elf tree. Listen up, everyone. The wise old elf can't be here, so he's put me in charge. Right, Ho. What do these buttons do? Ah! Don't touch anything. It's all automatic. Oof. This screen shows the world, and this flashing dot shows where Father Christmas is. He's at the North Pole. That's right, Holly. He's just about to set off. Ho, ho, ho. Good. That's all the presents packed. What was that tiny squeaky noise? Oh well, time to go, I think. Oh, oh, oh! Away we go! Look, Father Christmas is moving. He has to deliver presents to all the children. All the children? Even our friend Lucy? Yes! I wonder what Lucy is doing now. There, don't the decorations look pretty? Let's put the Christmas crackers on. Whoa! I wonder what's inside. <laughs> it will look nice here. Time to switch on the lights. Ooh! What's that flashing light? <gasps> Is that you, wise old elf? Oh, hello, Lucy. And hello, Lucy's mum. Nice to see you both again. But, wise old elf, what are you doing in our Christmas tree? It's a bit of a long story. You see, pine elves live in pine trees, and then they... Pine elves? What are pine elves? We're pine elves! <laughs> oh, my goodness! Cool! We've got pine elves in our Christmas tree. That's lovely, but it's probably best if you all stay hidden. Lucy's dad gets a bit nervous around little people. Did someone say little people? Um, eh... Uh... I'm really looking forward to a normal family Christmas with just us three and no talk of little people. Of course, darling. Anyway, it's getting late. Time for your bed, Lucy. Father Christmas won't come unless you're sleeping. OK. 
<laughs> night, night, Lucy. Night, night. I wonder where Father Christmas is now. Father Christmas has delivered presents to just about every child in the world. Good. Once it's delivered the last one, we can all get some sleep. Look, Father Christmas is almost at Lucy's house. One last present to deliver. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh. Let me out! Let me out! <sighs> that chair looks comfy. I'll just have a little sit down. <sighs> I mustn't fall asleep, but I'll just close my eyes for a moment. <laughs> The dots have stopped moving. Father Christmas hasn't left Lucy's house. He's fallen asleep. We'll have to go and wake him up. Come on, everyone, to the elf helicopter. I only hope we can get there before Father Christmas is discovered. A present! We'd like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas! <laughs> Merry Christmas! Lucy! That's Dad! I don't think your Dad could take all this. Everyone hide, quickly! Hide? Who has to hide? Um, um, Merry Christmas, darling. Let's pull a cracker. Oof! Let me out! Now, let's have a nice, normal Christmas. No weird, magical stuff. Oh, oof! At last! I'm out of that cracker! What? What is that? It's King Thistle. He's our friend from the Little Kingdom, Dad. Ah! Magical weirdness! It's happening again! Hello, Lucy's dad. Um, hello. Allow me the honour of reading you the cracker joke. What's at the North Pole and has two humps? Hmm. A lost camel. <laughs> Good, isn't it? Yeah. I wrote it myself. Uh, Lucy, you haven't opened your present. Oh, yes. <laughs> wow, a tiny fairy castle. Hello, Lucy. Queen Thistle, what are you doing in there? Um, it's a bit complicated, but... Basically, this isn't a toy. It's the real little castle shrunk down. Are you OK? I'll be fine once I'm my own size again. Um, are there any more of you, uh, fairies around here? What's that noise? Ah! Hello, Lucy's dad. Um, hello. Daddy! Mummy! Hello! Hello, everybody. Um, is that all of you now? Uh, there are the Pine Elves, too. Pine Elves? What are they? We're Pine Elves! They live in our Christmas tree. Pine Elves! Yes, of course. Why didn't I think of that? My goodness, it looks like just about everyone from the Little Kingdom is here. Hello. Um, hello. We heard the Christmas party was around your place this year. We're gnomes, by the way. <laughs> um, it seems we have gnomes as well. Yes, aren't you the lucky ones? <gasps> ah! Hello, big people. Happy Christmas from Planet Bong. Aliens? Elves? Fairies, gnomes, all we need now is Father Christmas. <sighs> ho, ho, ho! Wow! Father Christmas in our house! Ho, ho, ho! What? But who? But how? What my husband's trying to say is please join us for lunch. Hooray! <laughs> Merry Christmas, Daddy. Oh, Merry Christmas, Lucy. Merry Christmas, everyone. Big and little. <laughs> Come on, Gaston. Wiggle your legs. <laughs> Gaston.
Gaston loves wiggling his legs. <laughs> oh, has Gaston got one new spot today? I'm not sure. Do ladybirds get new spots? Ladybirds get a new spot for every birthday. Wow, Gaston's got lots of spots, so he must have had lots of birthdays. <laughs> and lots of birthday parties. <laughs> oh, have you never had a birthday party, Gaston? <laughs> That's really sad. Daddy, Mummy, it's not fair. Gaston's never had a birthday party. Well, I wish I'd never had a birthday party. Oh, darling, it's your birthday tomorrow and you'll enjoy it. No, I won't. This year I don't want a party. Oh, Daddy, you say that every year. Well, this year I mean it. I don't like my parties with the elf band singing about me getting older. You're lucky you're getting a party, Daddy. Gaston's never even had one. <sighs> then give my party to Gaston. I'm going to have a bath. Oh, same every year. So grumpy about his birthday, but he always enjoys it in the end. Come on, let's go and see how the elf band are getting on. Hello, wise old elf. We've come to hear the song you're doing for Daddy's birthday. Ah, yes. We've come up with a good one this year. I think King Thistle will be very pleased. King Thistle is old, 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 and today he's even older. King Thistle is old, 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 old. Very sweet. And I, Redbeard the Elf Pirate, will fire myself out of this cannon in the King's honour. But the King's birthday isn't until tomorrow. This is a dry run to see if it works. Light the fuse! Lighting the fuse. Whee! Hurrah! Where do you think he'll land? Who knows? Ah. Oh. I do like a nice, relaxing bath. It's good to get away from all that talk about birthdays. Happy birthday, Your Majesty! Ah! Get out of my bath! It's not my birthday! I know! This is a dry run! Now, see here! I don't want any birthday stuff! Ah, that's what you say every year! Look! I don't want a cake, I don't want a song, and I don't want a pirate in my bath! So, you really don't want a party? No! I don't want a party! Not this year, not next year, not any year! Never! No! Party! And that's when he started shouting. He was a tiny bit angry. So he really doesn't want a party? No. Oh, dear. What will we do with the presents we wrapped? And the cakes I baked. And our new song. And me cannon. We've got a whole birthday party ready and no one to give it to. Um, Daddy did say Gaston could have his party. <laughs> Poor Gaston has never had a birthday party. <laughs> Would you like a birthday party, Gaston? Then it's decided it will be Gaston's birthday party. <laughs> Hooray! We'll need a new song for Gaston from the Elf Band. Yes, Your Majesty. And I'll bake Gaston some cakes. And I'll fire myself out of me cannon in Gaston's honour. He'll appreciate it. Not like somebody whose name I won't mention. The King, I mean. <laughs> this will be the best party ever. What do you think Gaston would like for his birthday present? A squeaky toy. Very good. <coughs> now to wrap it. Spotty wrapping paper. Brilliant. Hello, I've finished my bath. Uh-oh, what are you doing? Relax, darling. It's nothing to do with you. A likely story. It really isn't, so stop fussing. Ah, uh, fine. Mmm, can I smell cakes? 
I thought so. What's going on, Nanny? Are you baking cakes? Yes, I am. These cakes had better not be for me. <laughs> They're not. Now, Shoe, go on. I haven't got time to talk to you. I suppose it is nice that they want to give me a party so much. <laughs> what shall we do for Gaston's birthday card? Let's draw a picture of Gaston. Good idea. Hello, Holly. Hello, Daddy. We're making a birthday card. I don't suppose it's for me, is it? No. No, of course not. Ha! I don't think my face is that red. And I don't have black spots. I told you, Daddy. It's not for you. <laughs> oh, yes. So you did. Ben! Hello, Dad. Do you want to help deliver the party invitations? Yes, please. Off we go. Oh, they're delivering invitations for my party. How sweet. Special delivery. Invitations to Gaston's birthday. Gaston's party is tomorrow at the Frog Pond. Are you all coming? Yes. yes. Of course we are. Where next? We mustn't forget Gaston. It is his party. <laughs> there you go, Gaston. An invitation to your very own birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Gaston loves eating letters. So, are you coming to your party, Gaston? <clears throat> I think that means yes. Ah. Oh. How are the preparations going for my party tomorrow? Your party? You're not having a party. Ho <laughs> ho! I know your little plan. What little plan? You told us not to plan anything. Ha <laughs> ha! That's right. I did. Good night then. Good night. <laughs> <sighs> oh, no one here. I expect they're all downstairs. <laughs> no birthday cards. Where is everybody? Of course, they're all secretly hiding outside, ready to shout, Happy Birthday, King Thistle! Oh, there's no one here. They must be having the party somewhere else. Ah, that sounds like a party. I'd better go and find out where it is. Not much of a party without me, the birthday boy. <laughs> and Gaston's brother, Tony, with Pam. And the little ladybirds, Amber, ruff, Emerald ruff, and Keith. Ruff, ruff, ruff. Happy birthday, Gaston. Here's your present. Ruff, ruff. <coughs> it's a squeaky toy. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I'm sorry, do you have an invitation? I don't need one. I'm King Thistle. King Thistle, King Thistle. No, your name's not on here. What? But it's my party. No, it's not, mate. It's Gaston the Ladybird's party. What? Take it easy, fella. It's supposed to be a happy occasion. It's all right. He's with us. What's going on? Where's my birthday party? You said you didn't want a party. I know I said that, but what I really meant was I do want a party. Oh, Daddy. You are silly. Yes, I know. Oh, well, I'm sure Gaston won't mind sharing his party with you. <laughs> Gaston, be nice and share your present with King Thistle. <laughs> Gaston, that's not how to behave on your birthday. <laughs> For me? How kind. <laughs> it's a squeaky toy. <laughs> yes, for you to chase. And now it's time for the birthday song. He's round and he's red with big black spots. How dare they! It's about Gaston, Daddy. He rolls on his back and he barks a lot. He's Gaston the Ladybird. That was really fun! Maybe birthday parties aren't that bad. What's that noise? Happy birthday! Ah! Hooray! Happy birthday, Daddy. Oh, thank you, Holly. Ah, 
Lucy, I do love fishing. Me too, Dad. It's so peaceful. Just what I need to get my nerves back in order. I wonder if we'll see any elves or fairies. Huh? Do we have to talk about weird magical stuff? <laughs> you know it upsets me. But you've seen the elves and fairies too, Dad. I've been thinking about it and I've decided I imagined it all. There are no such things as fairies or elves. <laughs> Hello, Lucy's dad. Ah, an elf in a submarine. Hello, Hello Lucy. Lucy. Hello, Ben and Holly. We're fishing. Uh, yes, we were just having a quiet morning's fishing. Dad, did you see that big fish? It's Big Bad Barry. <laughs> Barry. The fish is called Barry. Yes, the biggest, baddest fish in the lake. Whoa, what a whopper. <coughs> Dad, <coughs> you have <coughs> to throw him back in the water. <coughs> he can't breathe. Of course I will. But, but just take a photo so I can show my friends. There you go, Barry. Bye-bye. <coughs> We've got another fish. Oh, well, this isn't a fish. It's a mirror. Can we keep it, Dad? Yes, it's from the bottom of the lake, so it can't belong to anyone. Cool. OK, well, it's, it's been nice chatting to you, um, little folk. <laughs> but I think it's time to go home. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Do you think the mirror is magic, Dad? I hope not. I've seen enough magic for one day. Listen, somebody's crying. <laughs> it's a girl. <gasps> Hello. What are you doing in the lake? I live here. You live in the lake? Yes, I'm a mermaid. <gasps> my name is Oceana. Why were you crying? I've lost my mirror. That must be the mirror Lucy found. And where is this Lucy? She's a big girl, so she'll probably be on her way to school. Bye, Lucy. Pick you up later. Bye, Dad! Oh, no. A mermaid's mirror must never be seen by big people. Don't worry. I'm sure Lucy won't show it to anyone. Look, everybody. I found a mirror. Ooh! Ooh. Lovely. That's perfect for our show and tell. Come up to the front, Lucy, and show the mirror to the whole class. Ah! My poor mirror. I'll never get it back because I can't walk on land. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll get your mirror back. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Home time, children. Hi, Dad. Hi, Lucy. Good day. Lucy. Psst. Lucy. Ben, Holly, what are you doing here? We've come for the mirror. It belongs to a mermaid. A mermaid? Wow! Yes, and she needs her mirror back. Oh, OK. Please tell me this is just a game. Elves and fairies are one thing, but mermaids? Haven't you read about mermaids in books? Yes, but I've also read about dragons and witches, and they're not real either. Yes, yes they, they are. are. We can show you witches and dragons. And loads more if you like. No, no, thanks. I'll take your word for it. So, where is this mermaid? After you left, she got called back home to the bottom of the lake. She'll be having her dinner. Fish, probably. We have to find Oceana and give her mirror back. Right then. Into the submarine. Lucy, would you like to come too? Yes, please. Um, we'd love to join you, but I think we are just a tad too big to fit in your little submarine and... Ah! What's happening to me? Just shrinking you down. <laughs> My turn. Um, will we stay little forever? Oh, no. The spell will wear off in a bit and you'll grow big again. All aboard! <laughs> <laughs> Prepared to dive. Dive, dive, dive. It's beautiful. Look, Dad. 
Yes, it's all very pretty. In fact, I'm beginning to quite enjoy this magical adventure. You see, Dad, the world of elves and fairies is fun. Yes, I don't know why I was so worried about being magically shrunk down. It's amazing to be as small as these sweet little fishes. Not all the fish in the lake are sweet and little. Don't forget the fish you met this morning. Big, bad Barry. As I remember, Barry is about this big. Uh, that was before we were shrunk down, Dad. Now who would be about... That big! Oh, look! It's Barry! Ah! What does he want with us? He wants to eat the submarine. Any boat with me in it, Barry wants to eat. Yum, yum. Hold tight, everyone. I'm going to reverse. <laughs> Fear reversing. Fear reversing. Fear reversing. Now we go forwards. It's no good. That is too fast. He's going to eat us. Don't worry, Lucy. We've been in Barry's tummy before. And it was fine. That's good to know. Well, hello, Barry. <laughs> I don't understand. He should have eaten us by now. Maybe he remembers how my dad was nice to him this morning. That's right. You let Barry go. And fish never forget. Or is that elephants? <laughs> oh, that's nice. Barry's saying that as you so kindly let him go this morning, he is your best friend forever. In fact, he now thinks of you as his brother. Lovely. Uh, one tiny problem. In all the excitement of being chased by Barry, we've got lost. <laughs> Barry's saying that he knows where the mermaids live and he'll take us there. That's what his brother wants. His brother? That's you, Dad. Oh, yes. <clears throat> um, Barry, old brother, please lead us to the land of the mermaids. <laughs> Right hole. Look, Barry's found the mermaids. Mermaids love to swim along. Mermaids sing their mermaid song. Mermaids comb their lovely They sing so beautifully. Wow, a mermaid palace. This must be where Oceana lives. Diving suits on, everybody. Nice, Barry. Ah, uh, we're friends of your brother. Yes, they're with me. Mermaids, mermaids everywhere. Hello. Hello, mermaids. We're looking for Oceana. She's over there, being sad. <laughs> Oceana, we brought your mirror back. Oh, thank you so much. But why is it so tiny? We had to shrink it down to fit in the submarine. Don't worry, the spell will wear off soon and it'll grow big again. There you go. My mirror. Thank you all so much. You're very welcome. Well, it's been uh, very interesting meeting you uh, mermaids, but we must be getting back now. Bye, Oceana. Bye, everyone. Bye, Betty. <laughs> suddenly got big again. Well, that happened to me and my dad. Yep. And the fun bit is, you don't know when. Which means we should get a move on. We don't want them to grow big in the submarine. Ooh! I'm growing! Yeah, so am I. We must get to land. Full speed ahead! Almost there. Almost there. Try not to roll too much. <laughs> to panic. We had plenty of time. What an adventure! Yes, it was quite amazing. Remember, Lucy's dad, the little kingdom is meant to be secret. You must not tell any of your friends what you saw today. Tell my friends what I saw today. Let me think about that. And then the magical fairies shrank me down to the size of my thumb. I saw singing mermaids. And did I tell you that I now have a fish for a brother? No, I will not be telling anyone what I saw today. Fairy cakes! Who wants fairy cakes? Oh, yes, please. 
Wise old elf. Hmm, don't mind if I do. Ah, my ears are wiggling. That means there's magic about. Well, I did make the cakes with magic. Why can't you make cakes the normal way? By baking them in the oven. I don't have time for baking in ovens. I have lots of work to do. Ah, what work? I do more work than you. No, you don't. I do more work than you. I could do what you do, no problem. I could do what you do easily. Why don't you swap jobs? Then you'd know who does the most work. Good idea. Ho, ho, ho. Very funny, Your Majesty. I'm not joking. As your king, I command you to swap jobs for one day. The wise old elf can be Nanny. And Nanny can be the wise old elf. But... But... No buts. It's a royal command. All right, then. You'd better have my hat. And you'd better have my apron. Now, I'd better warn the elves what they're in for. Calling all elves. Just for today, somebody else is going to be the wise old elf. Who is it? Me! <gasps> Danny Plum! Don't worry. She won't do any magic. She has to do everything the elf way. I'm the wise old elf. Ahem. <clears throat> Magic always leads to trouble. Well, I have to go. I'm being Nanny Plum for the day. Goodbye. Oh, I should have taken Nanny's wand away. Don't worry. Nanny said she wouldn't do any magic. Hmm, I'll know if she does. My ears will wiggle. So, what does the wise old elf do all day? He has a list of jobs. He starts with the toy factory. Hello, everyone. I'm the wise old owl. Don't worry. It's just for today. Oh, I see. Um, well, wise old elf, the glute machine is broken. Can you fix it? No problemo. Time for a bit of magic. My ears are wiggling. Nanny is doing magic. Hello? No magic. All right. Keep your hair on. Nanny, you're the wise old elf today, remember? Oh, yes. How would he fix the gloop machine? He'd probably just kick it. OK. <laughs> the packaging machine isn't working. Do you want me to kick it? Yes, please, wise old elf. <laughs> the paint machine needs fixing. Oh, my foot's beginning to ache. Wise old elf. I'm Nanny Plum today, Your Majesty. Do you have Nanny's list of jobs? List of jobs? I don't think she has one. Nanny isn't one for lists. Why not start by washing my socks? All right, let's go down to the washing room. Oh, these stairs are going up. But a moment ago, they went down. Yes, it's magic. The stairs change all the time. The rooms get bored, so they move around. The toilet was on the roof once. Yes, that was fun. But how do I get down to the kitchen? You ask the stairs to go down. Stairs go down. You have to say the magic word. What magic word? Abracadabra? No, please. Oh, please go down. <laughs> Thank you. Right, let's get these dirty clothes into the washing machine. How do I turn it on? It's a magic washing machine. You have to talk to it. OK. Washing machine, wash the clothes. Say the magic word. Oh, please. No, abracadabra. Oh, abracadabra. <laughs> Goodness, this is harder than I thought it would be. Right, Ben. What does the wise old elf do now? Next on the list, the elf school. Good morning, children. Where's the wise old elf? Today, I'm the wise old elf. Ahem. <clears throat> Magic always leads to trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's today's lesson? We've been building a robot. You can ask him anything. OK, where am I? You are on the moon. 
that's not right, is it? Uh, maybe ask louder. OK. <clears throat> Where am I? You are at the bottom of the sea. Hmm. How would the wise old elf mend it? He'd probably disassemble the bias kernel, Boolean geek logic, Higgs, Boson, Quark, and then rewire them. Even if I had the foggiest idea what you were talking about, can you see me doing that? No. OK, magic time! <laughs> dee dee da, dum dee. Ah! My ears are wiggling. Now, where am I? You are. Here. You can't get more accurate than that. <laughs> Hello? Nanny? I know. Your ears are wiggling. Which means you are doing magic. Stop it. Stop it now. I do not like magic. Now, Holly, w what is my next job? Um, magic school. Oh. Good morning, children. I am Nanny Plum for today. Good morning, Nanny Plum. Today's magic lesson is magic always leads to trouble. So, don't do magic. The end. Is that it? Yes. Now, I think I'll have a little nap. So, this is Nanny Plum's bedroom. It's all flowers, bunnies and cushions. Lovely, isn't it? At least I can have a little sleep. Ah! It's so soft! It's not a bed, it's a giant pudding. What's next? The wise old elf has a little nap. So, this is the wise old elf's bedroom. How could a room be more boring? Ow! That's not a bed, it's a plank of wood. Wise old elf, please report to elf rescue. Oof. What now? You have to sit here and wait for the red phone to ring. If the red phone rings, you launch elf rescue and save people from deadly peril. Are the biscuits? Yes. Oh, goody. Oh, how could a bed be so soft? Oh, what is it now? Nanny, I want a snack. Nanny! OK, Your Majesty. Aha, jelly. Your snack, King Thistle. Lovely. What is it? Jelly. Oh, that's magic jelly. We don't want a jelly flood. Oh, oh there's not going to be a jelly flood. But all it takes is someone to shout, Magic jelly, more, more, more. Who would be foolish enough to shout magic jelly, more, more, more? Whoops! Jelly flood! Jelly flood! Can somebody answer the phone? I'm busy eating biscuits. Nanny, you're in charge. Oh, all right. Hello, Elf Rescue here. It had better be something important. Um, uh, I seem to have made a jelly flood. Can you rescue us, please? Okie dokie. Elf Rescue a go. Launch everything. Elf Rocket A-OK. -okay. Elf Plane A-OK. -okay. Elf Helicopter A-OK. -okay. Thank goodness you're here, Elf Rescue. A jelly flood isn't a job for Elf Rescue. It's a job for Nanny Plum. Magic time! Thank you, Nanny. Being you for a day wasn't easy. And it wasn't easy being you either. Ah, I'm Nanny Plum again. And I'm the wise old elf. Good. Everything is back to normal. Hooray! Can I celebrate by turning you into a frog? Don't even think about turning me into a frog. <laughs> Hello, Mrs Fig. Lovely autumn day, isn't it? Um, yes, wise old elf. Only problem is the apples are starting to fall. 
Wow, that was close. So far, I've been lucky. They've all missed my magic school. <laughs> oh, that one didn't miss. Oh, dear. My poor magic school. Broken. Well, you're a fairy. Can't you just mend it with magic? No. Magic always leads to trouble. You don't like magic, do you, Mrs Fig? That's right, Holly. I want to mend the school the normal, sensible, safe way by using a builder. Well, you're in luck. I'm a builder, but it won't be cheap. We're going to need bricks, cement, roof tiles. I know. We'll have a cake stall. The money we make from selling cakes will pay for the repairs. A cake stall? It sounds fun. Let's tell everyone to get baking. Daddy! Daddy! An apple fell on Mrs Fig's magic school. And now the school has a big hole in it. Oh, dear. That's a shame. Mrs Fig is asking everybody to bake cakes to raise money. Bake cakes? Uh, well, don't tell your mother about that. About what, darling? Mrs Fig is running a cake stall. Oh, how exciting. I'll bake some cakes. R really? There's no need. Mrs Fig needs them today. Then I'd better start straight away. Oh, no. What is it, Daddy? Your mother is not very good at baking cakes. Oh. She bakes horrible cakes and she gets very upset if anyone doesn't like them. dum de dum de dee de do That's odd. Who's in my kitchen? <gasps> the Queen baking cake! Yes, Nanny Plum. Would you like to try a cake? Maybe later. Cakes! Cakes! The Queen's baking cakes! I know. We'll have to leave the country. Pack a bag, everyone. The Queen's cakes can't be that bad. They're worse than bad. They're... Cake time. Who wants to try my lovely cakes? Uh, <gasps> um, um, oh, uh... I've got rock cakes. Fudge cake and gingerbread. They look lovely. In fact, they look too good to eat. You don't want to eat them, do you? You think they're horrid. No, no, no. I can't wait to try them. Have a rock cake. Ow! Did you just say ow? No, I said oh. Is it nice? It's inedible. I, I mean, incredible. But maybe I'll save it for later. Try the fudge cake. Ah, uh, isn't it someone else's turn? Don't you want my fudge cake? Of course I do. What do you think? <coughs> Tasty? <coughs> Are you all right, Daddy? My mother's stuck. What's he saying? I'm saying my mouth is stuck. Oh, I think his mouth is stuck shut. <coughs> Oh, that was horrific! You think the fudge cake is too sticky, don't you? You hate it! No, no, of course not, darling. It's uh, amazing! Oh, good. Try the gingerbread. Dunk it in your coffee. That will make it all soft and yummy. Um, the coffee's just rolled off it. It's completely dry. Take a bite. You know, maybe I'll save this one for later, too. OK. Well, I can't stand around chatting. I've got loads more cakes to bake. Rock-hard rock cakes, super sticky fudge, waterproof gingerbread. We'll have to warn the whole of the Little Kingdom. The Queen's baking cakes! <laughs> Queen's baking cakes! Oh, no! I can't eat one of those cakes again. No one can eat them and survive. Hello! Cake time, everyone! Uh, yes, but you shouldn't have troubled yourself, Your Majesty. We already have lots of cake. You don't want my cakes? Oh, yes, we do. You think they're horrible, don't you? Of course we don't. Oh, Good, then. I'll put them here. That should raise lots of money to mend your school, Mrs Fig. Thank you, Your Majesty. Maybe I should have used magic to mend the school. It would have been less dangerous. Keep clear of the cakes. No one eat them. 
Ooh, cakes. Wait! Yow! What kind of a cake is that? It's a rock cake. Queen Thistle baked it. Oh, the queen baking again. The fudge cake glues your mouth shut. And the gingerbread is waterproof. Incredible! What can these things be made of? I want to do some tests on these cakes. This machine tests how strong things are. Let's start with something very weak, like this egg. The egg had a strength of one. Now let's try a brick. The brick had a strength of five. Now let's try the Queen's Rock Cake. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's reached eleven. Eleven? Nothing has gone to eleven before. Stand up, <gasps> The cake broke the machine. That cake is the strongest substance known to man. The fudge cake stuck Daddy's mouth shut. Hmm. Let's test how sticky it really is. Stop, wise old elf! Don't touch the fudge cake! You'll be stuck to it forever! OK, let's just say the Queen has created the stickiest substance known to man. What about the gingerbread? Daddy dipped it in his coffee and it stayed dry. Let's see how waterproof it is. Amazing! The most waterproof substance known to man. These cakes must be locked away. They must never be eaten. Not eaten, no. But maybe they can be used for something else. I do hope I've made enough cakes. What if they need more for the cake stall? Trust me, they won't want any more cake. More cake, please. Really? Yes, as many as you can bake. And fudge cake. And gingerbread. Oh, goody. They love my cakes. I'd better get baking. Who's eating all these cakes? Eating them? No one's eating them. So why do you want more? These cakes are the perfect building material. The rock cakes are super strong bricks. We're gluing them together using the super sticky fudge cake. And then the super waterproof gingerbread makes great roof tiles. Amazing! But of course, you must never tell the Queen. Never tell the Queen what? Uh... Oh, Mrs Fig, you've mended the school, so you managed to raise enough money by selling my cakes. Um, let's just say your cakes were a great help. Yes, three cheers for Queen Thistle. Hip, hip, hooray! hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! hooray! Hip, hip! Hang on. These bricks look just like my rock cakes. Uh, yes. And this cement is just like my fudge cake. It is my fudge cake. Oh, no! At least she hasn't spotted the roof. And the roof tiles are my gingerbread. You didn't want to eat my cakes. Well, they're not really for eating, are they, darling? Not if you want to survive. I thought everybody liked my cakes, but nobody did. I wish I'd never baked a single cake. <laughs> but, Mummy, if we hadn't baked any cakes, we wouldn't have mended the school. Holly is right. It's only because of your baking the magic school is fixed. I suppose that's true. Hooray for Queen Thistle! Hooray! In fact, we could do with some cakes to finish the chimney. If you don't mind baking some more. Could you make some bricks for my house? I want to build a patio. Do you do know paving slabs? Well, I suppose I could. Do you do drain pipes? Do you do MDF? Everyone loves my mummy's cake. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's playgroup outing. Uh, Mrs Fotheringill, are you sure it's a good idea taking the toddlers on an outing? They can be quite a handful. <laughs> the little darlings do have high spirits, 
But this time, I'm not going to let them get the better of me. That's the spirit, Mrs. Fotheringill. She's doomed. Let's check all the toddlers are here. Daisy and Poppy. <laughs> uh, Daisy and Poppy have promised to be as good as gold today. Not that that means very much. I'm sure if Daisy and Poppy say they will be good, they will be. Good as gold. <laughs> Nettle Elf. Ouch! She stung Mrs. Fotheringill with her nettle. Raspberry Fairy? <laughs> My little sister. Even her wand is rude. <laughs> oh, and last but not least, Tarquin. <laughs> Tarquin like Fotheringill? Tarquin is a monster. Remember last time when the toddlers made Mrs. Fotheringill disappear? Yes. All they found was her shoes. <laughs> now, for today's outing, we're going on a trip to the museum. The big museum? But that's full of big people. Yes, but the museum has so many interesting things for the toddlers to look at. Are you going to take away their wands, Mrs. Fotheringill? No, Holly. If you trust a child, they will repay your trust. <laughs> this is going to be a catastrophe. What's a catastrophe, Daddy? What this is going to be. Oh, look! Here comes the magic bus. All aboard! Come on, everyone. All tight, going up. Next up, the big museum. Now, as you know, there will be big people at the museum. And we don't want to be seen by big people, do we? No! So what should you do if a big person sees you? Turn them into a frog. No, no, no. If a big person sees you, just pretend to be a toy, like this. I'm a toy. I'm a toy. Last stop, big museum. Everybody off. Oh. Keep together. In we go. Wow, these stairs are big. Well, this museum is built for big people. Follow me, everyone, and try not to be seen. Ah! Whoa! Look, Mum, a tiny little person. I'm a toy! I'm a toy! It's a toy. Some poor child must have lost it. Just put it over there so they can find it again. OK, Mum. Phew! That was close. Yes, Ben, but it shows the plan works. If you're seen, just pretend to be a toy. I still think turning them into frogs is simpler. In the big museum, we can get an idea of how wonderful it was in the past. This first room is about the Stone Age. Ooh. A long time ago, the big people lived in caves. These are models of how the cave people must have looked. There's a button to press. Did the cave people have electric light bulbs? No. That's to show how the campfire would have looked when it was lit. Here's another button. <laughs> they move. Ooh. You see, King Thistle? The toddlers are being as good as gold. Good as gold. <laughs> it's actually going quite well. The toddlers haven't even made Mrs. Fotheringill disappear yet. Stone Age times. Close your eyes and imagine what it must have been like. <laughs> I have always wanted to know what it would be like to live in the Stone Age. Abracadabra! Yeah! Oh, dear. I suppose it was never going to last. All they've left is her shoes. Daisy, Poppy, where have you sent Mrs. Fotheringill? Stone, Stone Age! Age. <gasps> They've sent Mrs. Fotheringill back to the Stone Age. That was a very naughty thing to do. Bring Mrs. Fotheringill back right now. <sighs> OK. Oh! On second thoughts, you don't want to know what it was like to live in the Stone Age. Oh, my shoes! It's good to have them back. Right. Next room, Ancient Egypt. Ooh! Look. Here is a model showing how a pyramid was built. It's quite small. 
Were the ancient Egyptians the size of elves and fairies? No, the ancient Egyptians were big people. And the pyramids are huge. But they wouldn't be able to fit a full-sized pyramid into the museum. Big. That's right, Daisy. Think how big a real pyramid would be. Here we go again. Use your imagination. Big. Ah, oh, no! Stop! Stop it! My turn. What's going on here? Big people are coming. What's in there? Everyone, pretend to be toys. And what are these little toys doing here? Hello. Uh, hello? Frog time. <laughs> Well done, Tarquin. Like they always say, when things are not going quite right, turn them into a frog. That doesn't even rhyme. And turning people into frogs is not a good way to do things. Why not? He'll turn back to a person in a moment and he won't remember a thing. We'd better get out of here before he turns back again. Yes, on with the tour. Oh, my goodness, that was all a bit of an adventure. What we need now is something a little less dangerous. Next room, the Vikings. Less dangerous? Vikings? People think the Vikings just ran around shouting. But really, they were gentle people who farmed and played music. If only there were Vikings around today, I'd love to know what they'd say to us. <laughs> she never learns. Abracadabra! <laughs> Interesting fact about Vikings, all they ate was Spam. I don't think that is correct. It's true! Vikings ate Spam. It was on the telly. Uh, Nanny, what happens when the frogs turn back into Vikings? They'll be very confused and maybe a tiny bit annoyed. Right, let's make sure we're not around when that happens. Wow, look at all those frogs. And what's this? Sorry about this, but I'm going to have to turn you all into frogs. Just for a bit. Eh? Hey? Frog time! <laughs> Nanny, why are there still bangs going on in the other rooms? Well, it was going to happen at some point anyway, so I thought I'd save a bit of time and just turn the whole lot of them into frogs. All the big people in the museum? You've turned them all into frogs? That's right. I knew you'd be pleased. Oh, what happened? Where am I? It's the museum man. He's turned back to himself again. Yes, and he's confused and a little bit annoyed. Ah! Oh, no! Ah! All the Vikings are turning back too. Right. I think this is as good a time as any to leave. Let's get out of here. Stop the Little Kingdom! Last stop! Everybody off! Oh. Well, all in all, that didn't go too badly. We survived and the museum wasn't destroyed. <laughs> Good goal! You see? All you have to do is trust the little darlings and they will repay your trust. She's really in a world of her own. She never learns. And next time, I thought we could visit a... Next time? Yes, we'll visit a big castle. You know, I've always wanted to live in the times of knights in armour. Abracadabra! Yeah! <laughs> oh, let's bring her back. Abracadabra. On second thoughts, I never want to live in the time of knights in armour. I think the safest, nicest time is right here and now. <laughs> wow, look at all the lovely tulips. Yes, Holly, it's the first day of spring. Wow, there's a flower right outside our window. All the daffodils have come up. I love springtime. Ben, Ben, are you coming out to play? 
I'll be right down. Have you seen all the flowers? Yes, and... Oh, those leaves are moving. There's something in there. It's coming out. Ah! <laughs> Ooh, a little hedgehog. <laughs> Gaston's frightened him. He's rolled up into a ball. Sorry, Mr Hedgehog. Oh, a hedgehog. <laughs> He's woken up for the spring. Woken up? Yes. Some creatures sleep all through the winter. Don't they get very hungry? They make sure they have a big meal before going to sleep. Oh, there's something else waking up. And it's big. It could be a bear. It could be a... Hello there. Ah! The gnome! gnome. Do gnomes sleep through the winter too? Yes, and when they wake up, they're very hungry. Ah, what's for breakfast? Uh, Mr Gnome, wouldn't you like to sleep a bit more? Eh? What do you mean? Uh, maybe it's not springtime yet. We could still get some snow. Eh, Nanny Plum? Ow! Stop it! It could snow at any moment, couldn't it? Ow! I don't think so. It could snow if magic was used. Oh! You want me to magic some snow so he'll think it's still winter. Shh! Why didn't you say so? Oh, dear me, it's snowing. I'd better go back to sleep. Hang on. Over here, it's sunny and there's flowers. You try to trick me. Ha, ha, ha. I like a good joke. Shame I don't know any. I've had some funny dreams, though. Would you like to hear them? Uh, no, thank you. Yes, there's nothing so boring as other people's dreams. Anyway, I dreamt I was in this rowboat and the oars were made of cheese. Then a lot of pigeons wearing pyjamas started chasing me. How interesting. <gasps> There's lots more to tell. But first, I need food. Hello there. Ah! I mean, hello, Mr Gnome. This looks like a nice comfy house. I wouldn't mind living here. Uh, you can't live here. I like a man who speaks his mind. We'll have some good chats while I'm living here. Mr Gnome, we'd really love to have you stay, but the front door is too small for you. Well, if you really want me to stay, I'll try my best. <laughs> Nearly there. Just my bottom to go. Hello, everyone. It's a bit of a squeeze in here. I'll just move this little staircase. He's eating everything! What's for dessert? Save your food! Mr Gnome, wouldn't you rather live somewhere with other gnomes? Oh, no. Gnomes don't like other gnomes. Gnomes tell very boring stories. You never get two gnomes living within a hundred miles of each other. Hello? Nanny Plum, you must come back to the little castle at once. Sorry, King Thistle, but we're having a problem with a gnome. What? But I've got a gnome at the castle. Is there any more toast? There must be two gnomes. <laughs> no need to panic. What do you mean? You heard what the gnome said. Gnomes don't like other gnomes. We just have to get them together. When they see each other, they'll run a mile. Problem solved. Yay! We'll arrange for both gnomes to meet each other at Big Hill. You seem to be out of food. Have you tried the breakfast tree on Big Hill? Breakfast tree? Never heard of it. Oh, it's amazing, isn't it, Nanny Plum? Ow! What did you nudge me for? Yes, over on Big Hill, there's a tree that grows sausages and eggs and bacon. Is there? I've never seen it. Ow! You don't even know you're doing it. Nanny, he wants you to magic one. Oh, I see. You want me to magic up a breakfast tree? Shush. OK, then. Hmm. I can smell breakfast from here. Hello. Quick, Your Majesty. Tell your gnome that there's a breakfast.
Christmas tree on Big Hill. Ooh! They say that breakfast don't grow on trees, but my, my! A tree with eggs, bacon, sausages and toast. The most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Look, they're about to meet and run a hundred miles from each other. Uh, a gnome! What are you doing here? I could ask you the same question. Go on, then. What are you doing here? I like breakfast. Would you like to know why? No. I'll take that as a yes. It's because I like fried eggs and sausages and bacon and pancakes and... <coughs> You've eaten it all! Well, if you didn't talk so much, you could do some eating. Right! I'm going a hundred miles away from you. I'm going a thousand miles away from you. It worked. They've both left the little kingdom. What a brilliant plan. Well done, Nanny Plum. Thank you, King Thistle. Uh, <clears throat> it was my idea, Your Majesty. No, it wasn't. I thought of getting them together. I magicked up the breakfast tree. Let's just say elf cleverness and fairy magic has saved the day. Yay! She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. Still here. We thought you'd uh, gone far away. I tried, but I just can't get her out of my head. That lady gnome's beautiful, isn't she? Do you like the way her eyes sort of sparkle? For pity's sake, can't we talk about something else? OK, then. Don't you think she has pretty ears? Oh, this is terrible. He's in love with her. That's springtime for you. He's a fine figure of a gnome, isn't he? Oh, yes. And hasn't he got a nice big tummy? If you say so. I've made up a song about him. Would you like to hear it? No. I'll take that as a yes. Oh, look, I think he's coming. <gasps> Is he? How do I look? Is my hat on straight? Oh, it's you. I thought you'd gone. Yes, well, I, I just... That is to say, I, er, uh, that's the first time I've seen a gnome lost for words. Would you like to hear a song I've written? <laughs> yes. I'll take that as a yes. Oh, my lady gnome has lots of lovely hair and lots of pretty eyes and ears so fair. <laughs> I like it. I'm Gloria. They're friends now. Gloria, will you be my own lady gnome and live with me forever in the little kingdom? Yes, I will. Come, my dear, I'll show you your new house. Here we are. This is where we'll be living. Ooh! Whose idea was it to get them together? Nanny Plum, Your Majesty. No, it wasn't. It was your idea. Well, you made the breakfast tree. You told me to. Stop! Stop! What are we going to do about it? We can have a big wedding. Hello again. I'm afraid we have some bad news. What is it now? We've had a look at the elf tree and Gloria feels it's a bit tiny. I'm sorry we didn't design our elf tree for gnomes to live in. Nice of you to apologise, but it's still too small. And your castle isn't really to our taste. It's too old-fashioned. Old-fashioned? And drafty. So I'm afraid we'll have to find somewhere else. Oh, well, goodbye. It's a shame we won't see you ever again. Oh, don't worry. We'll be back for our holidays. See you next spring. Hello. Ah, big people. Hello, wise old elf. It's me, Father Christmas. Father Christmas? Christmas. Why are you dressed like that? I'm in disguise. Top secret and all that. Ooh! I've popped down to check how you elves and fairies are doing with the Christmas preparations. Everything is in 
Wonderland, Mr Christmas. We've made all the toys for you to give to the children of the world. Dolls' houses, footballs and teddy bears. Lovely. And Mr Elf has been flying day and night, delivering the toys to you at the North Pole. Good. Good. And how about the Christmas crackers? The fairies are in charge of the crackers. Hello, everyone. We have a visitor. Ho, ho, ho. Ah! Of course. You don't know who I am. I'm in disguise. You're Father Christmas. Oh, yes. Mr Christmas, would you like to test a cracker? <laughs> Wow! That's loud. Yes. Nanny Plum is in charge of the bangs. Less bang, please, Nanny. What? But the bang is the best bit. That's why we do the cracker-making underground. Let's try the paper hat. How do I look? <laughs> Very Christmassy. And we've got some good cracker jokes this year. What do you get if you cross a kangaroo and a sheep? A woolly jumper. <laughs> Daddy, that's awful. Cracker jokes are meant to be awful. That's why we get King Thistle to write them. <laughs> and the cracker toys. This year, we've made telephones to put in the crackers. A tiny telephone. Does it really work? No, it's just a lump of plastic. And down there, all the bits and bobs are put into the crackers by magic. Mr. Elf has delivered loads of Christmas crackers to the shops already. Good. The big people pick them up and put them on the shelves. And they have no idea the crackers were made by elves and fairies. Jolly good work. And how are the Christmas trees? The pine elves have been growing them all year. We've come to see the Christmas trees. Ho, ho, ho! Hello, Father Christmas. Like the outfit, what fashion is it exactly? Uh, it's meant to be a disguise. So many lovely Christmas trees. Yes, pine elves are good at growing Christmas trees. And we're pine elves! tree has little windows in it. Yes, we live in a great oak tree. The pine elves live in a great pine tree. All elves live in trees. Goodness knows why. How do you get all the Christmas trees to the shops? Once a year, the big people come and cut the trees down. And they have no idea the Christmas trees were grown by us little people. But what if they cut down the great pine tree? There's no danger of that. The great pine tree is too big. Everything seems in hand. Thank you, elves and fairies. Our pleasure. I need to get back to the North Pole and change clothes. I can't deliver presents dressed like this. Bye. Bye-bye, Father Christmas. Now, where did I leave my sleigh? The big people should be here any moment to cut the trees down. Here they come. They mustn't see us. Everyone into the great pine tree. You all stay down here. I'm going upstairs to take a look. Close the shutters. Good. Now we're completely hidden. Right, men. Let's cut these Christmas trees down. Timber! Problem. We pine elves are used to the noise. Uh, that was loud. I think they've finished. Excellent. They've taken all the trees. Uh, even the great pine tree. Ah! Where's the upstairs gone? The big people have taken it. Don't worry. The wise old elf will sort this out. Uh, where is the wise old elf? 
It's for you. Oh, hello. Your Majesty. It's a disaster. The great pine tree has been cut down with all the pine elves inside. Well, if they will insist on living in a Christmas tree, what do they expect? <laughs> Your Majesty, that is not helpful. Honestly, why can't they live like normal people in a castle? Nanny Plum, tea break. Ooh, thank you, Queen Thistle. Cracker testing is thirsty work. <gasps> That's the sound of big feet. The big people are coming. They must see the little castle. Oh, yes. Um, uh, I know. I'll shrink it down. Shrink, little castle. Shrink, shrink, shrink. Good. With any luck, the big people won't notice it now. Ah, Nanny Plum! You've shrunk me as well! Uh... Oh, here come the big people. Now, where did I leave my sleigh? Oh, what's this? A toy castle. I didn't know the elves were making these. What's that squeaky noise? Oh, well, I'll just take this toy to the North Pole myself, or else some poor child won't get their Christmas present. Uh, Mr. Christmas! Ho, ho, ho! Away we go! Oh, dear. Home at last. Uh, where is my castle? Uh, somehow it sort of shrunk itself down. And Father Christmas thought it was a toy and he's taking it to the North Pole. What? Well, if some people will live in houses that look like little toy castles, what do they expect? Hmm. <laughs> the Queen will sort this out. Queen Thistle! We have a little problem up here that we might need a hand sorting out. Where is the Queen? Uh, on her way to the North Pole. Somehow she shrank down inside the castle. I see. I'll just have to sort this mess out myself then. Let's give Father Christmas a ring. Ah, good. A phone. Ah! Put me down. Ah! Get me out of this cracker. Still one more box of crackers? Let's get them loaded. Taking a long time. I'm the king! <laughs> oh, another box of crackers. It's funny, we never see who delivers them. Ah, oh, trapped in a cracker! <sighs> oh well, at least I can phone for help. Ah, oh, yes, it's not a phone. It's a lump of plastic. Get me out of this cracker! Trees! Last delivery of Christmas trees! Wow, that's a big Christmas tree. Stacked up in a garden centre. How embarrassing. The North Pole. I need to get ready for my Christmas deliveries. One last toy to be wrapped. I'm not a toy. I'm Queen Thistle. Ah! Help! Let me out! I'm the Queen. King Thistle trapped in a cracker. The wise old elf stuck in a Christmas tree. Queen Thistle wrapped up as a present. What will happen next? Join us again as our Christmas adventure continues. Ah, Daisy, Bobby, stop making that awful noise! This is too loud, Daisy, Poppy. I'm taking your wands away and putting them in the cupboard. <laughs> Mummy is right. No more wands until you learn to use them properly. Ah, oh, finally. A bit of peace and quiet. Oh, who's that? Ahem. 
Granny Thistle is here. Oh, no! My mother! Granny Thistle! Granny! Granny! Granny. Darlings, darlings, darlings! Marvellous to see you. Holly, give your Granny a hug. <laughs> Hello, Granny Thistle. Oh, young Ben Elf, always a pleasure to see you. <laughs> What's wrong with the twins? Why are you so sad? Wandy, Wandy. <gasps> Where are your wands? I've taken them away for now. But how will they do magic without wands? Uh, maybe it's better if Daisy and Poppy don't do magic. Well, they're your children, darling, and the last thing I want to do is interfere. At least Holly has a wand. Oh, yes. Holly's having magic lessons from me. What have you learned, Holly? I can turn people into frogs. Or rabbits. Frogs? You're still on frogs? And rabbits. But that's baby magic. What about the hard stuff, like putting pink spots in the sky? <laughs> or making the trees sing? La, 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 la. No, thank you, Mother. We don't have much need for singing trees. Or pink spots in the sky. OK, you're the boss. Anyway, I've brought presents. Presents for the children. Presents! Holly, I've brought you this beautiful ring. Thank you. Is it magical? Um, maybe a little. Just don't rub it, OK? OK. And for Daisy and Poppy... Two grown-up wands! Wandy! Wandy! But we've just taken their wands away. Yes, it's lucky I came when I did. These wands belonged to your great-grandparents, Vlad the Powerful and Sharon the Totally Insane. Not dangerous, are they? Only as dangerous as the person who waves them. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think we'd better put these straight in the cupboard. Oh, well, of course, you know best. And it's past your bedtime. Mm. Come on, up to bed. Now for your bedtime story. Little Bunny Bunting. Darling, would you mind awfully if I read the twins the story? Uh, oh, yes, of course. How kind. But uh, try not to get them too excited. They're meant to be going to sleep. Of course. Leave it to me. Once upon a time, there lived a rabbit called Little Bunny Bunting. Sounds a bit boring to me. <laughs> this is the book that I had when I was a little girl. Crazy spells for the under fives. <laughs> Spell number one, how to make a storm. Ooh. What a day. Where's Granny now? Uh, she's with the twins. Oh, is that such a good idea? After me, wave your wands. <laughs> Wandy. No wands? Oh, of course. Mummy and Daddy knew best and took your wands away. Never mind. Here's mine. Wandy. Say, thunder, thunder, thunder. Thunder, thunder, thunder. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I wonder if that had something to do with Granny. Hello, is Holly coming out to play? Hello, Ben. She'll be down in a minute. Did you hear the storm last night? Hear it? It was in our bedroom. A storm in a bedroom? Cool. It was a magical storm. Good morning, Mother. I already know the answer to this, but who showed them how to make a magical storm? Me. What a surprise. Only a little indoor weather, darling. Nothing to worry about. What else did you teach them? Oh, just a few harmless little spells. Hi, everyone. Hello, Holly. Morning, Ben. Ah, why are there two Hollies? 
Daisies. Daisy and Poppy did a spell on me. We asked them not to, but they did it anyway. This is what happens when Daisy and Poppy do magic. So, it's a little doubling spell. No harm done. It's not like there's ten hollies. Morning! 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 And if there were, wouldn't that be nice? Wandy, Wandy. Where did they get the wand from? Oh, it seems to be my wand. Bye-bye. <laughs> They've disappeared. The twins have escaped. <laughs> <laughs> They're out in the wild. Sound the Daisy and Poppy alarm. Oh, this is all a big fuss over nothing. Oh, yes. The twins are out there somewhere and they've got your wand. What other spells did you teach them? Ah, uh, I did mention something about walking trees. Tree go walkies. Walkies. Trees are walking towards the little castle. I don't want to hear it. It's like a bad dream. I suppose this is your doing, Nanny Plum. No, it was Granny Thistle. Hello there. Granny Thistle, I might have known. It's been a long time. Cedric. Not long enough, Millicent. You always were a troublemaker. Yes, Mother. You started this. Now you have to sort it out. OK, you're the boss. I just think children should have a bit of fun. That's all. There's good fun and bad fun. This is bad fun. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Daisy and Poppy, you're a long way from home. Bunny Rabbit. <laughs> Froggy! <laughs> ah! Daisy and Poppy are going bananas! <laughs> bananas! I'm a banana! <laughs> <laughs> oh, darlings! There you are! I see you've been doing lots of fab magic. Chicken! Quack, quack! What? Oh, wonderful! <laughs> Oh, I'm a hedgehog. Groovy. <laughs> Pebble. You've turned me to stone. Maybe not so good. <laughs> Holly, I think it's time for you to rub that ring now. What's she saying? The ring? Rub the ring? I think she's saying rub the ring. But didn't you say not to rub the ring? I've changed my mind. It's not good fun anymore. Rub the ring. All right, here we go. Huh? What happened? We're back in the little castle. And everything's back to normal. No walking trees or spots in the sky. Yes, Holly rubbed the magic ring. It turned everything back as it was. That is some powerful ring. Yes, the ring belonged to your great-grandfather, Neville the Naughty. Oh, look at the little darlings. They're all tired out. Story, story. You like a story? Of course, my darlings. Dangerous magic for toddlers. How long is my mother staying for? Two weeks. Chapter one, how to turn mice into dragons. <laughs> Dragon! Dragon! <laughs> Look what's come in the post. What a fancy envelope. It looks very posh. Let's see who it's from. Dear King and Queen Thistle, I have decided to come and visit your little kingdom today. I'll be arriving at dinner time. Yours sincerely, King Leopold. King Leopold? Yes. Never heard of him. He's heard of you, Daddy. Just think, a king. I'm a king. No, but a proper one. We must give him a royal welcome. He's a VIP. What's a VIP? A very important person. I'm a very important person. 
What is everyone getting so excited about? Have you heard the news? A king is coming to visit. It's written down in writing. Brilliant, isn't it? A real king. I'm a real king. It's so exciting that a very important person is coming. I want to tell everyone. I want to tell the marigolds. Hello. Hello. Queen Thistle here. Oh, my little sister. How are you? I'm fine. I just thought you'd like to know that we have King Leopold visiting today. Who's King Leopold? A very important person. A VIP? Oh, my goodness. A VIP? Our castle's bigger. Why can't the VIP come here? No, thank you. King Leopold wants to visit us. Oh. But maybe you could come and meet him too. Oh, yes, please. We're having a party in his honour tonight. We'll be there. Bye. Usually the marigolds laugh and laugh and laugh at us, but this time we'll be different. <laughs> We've got King Leopold coming to visit. We must start preparing. We'll have to make lots of lovely food. I'll start cooking straight away. We'll need a red carpet and the little children can wave flags to welcome King Leopold. And we'll have beautiful music. Now, children, everyone pick an instrument. Then you can play the spal throttle. OK. I've got the thump warbler. <coughs> and I've got the trimpy trumpy. <coughs> I think I'll have the fairy harp. Ah! Magic instruments! It is meant to be an elf and fairy band. And we fairies always use magical instruments. Oh, very well. Just a little magic, then. OK. Here's the magic piano. Hello, I'm a magic piano. I sing and I talk and I play. Ah! Too much magic. The wise old elf doesn't like magic. Ah, oh, sorry. I'm not a magic piano. I'm just a normal piano. I don't talk, really. My turn. A magic triangle. I can't bear to look. Oh, a pretty triangle. What's magical about that? Just don't ask it for free wishes. <laughs> ah! Would it be OK if we played some rock and roll? Rock and roll? Certainly not. We're playing for King Leopold, remember? OK. It was just a thought. Now, let's make music. Good work, everybody. It's looking great. Where's the food? Nanny Plum! There you go. I've made spaghetti vongole a la truffles. Yum, yum! This food looks delicious. Better than the usual stodge you make me. That's because King Leopold is coming to dinner. <sighs> Have all the little children got their flags to wave? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't they do that for me? Because... I know, I know. I'm not King Leopold. And we need music. Where's the band? Here we are. We've been practising all afternoon. Oh, good. It's nearly time. Everybody into their seats. I can hear footsteps. Someone's coming. Hooray! 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 Here he comes. Let's start the music. Hello there. Evening all. Get out of the way. We're waiting for a very important person. Oh, yes? Who's that, then? King Leopold. That's me. <gasps> you? You're King Leopold? Are you an actual king? Oh, yes. Where's your crown? I keep it under me hat. But why have 
you never told us before? Oh, I don't like to go on about it. Don't like to go on about it? You sent us this flowery letter asking for a feast. Yes. Well, if I just drop in, I find people usually send me away. But if I send a letter as King Leopold, I get a bit more of a welcome and a dinner. It works the first time anyway. Can I have this pie? Uh, yes, I suppose so. <laughs> Very nice. I know a fact about pies. Do you want to hear it? No. no. I'll take that as a yes. Pies are never found in the wild. They have to be made by someone. <laughs> <sighs> All that... Effort and King Leopold oh turns out to be the gnome. Yes, mm. it's an outrage. <laughs> oh, he's still a king. And you've all been making such a fuss about a very important person coming. Daddy is right. Yes, we should still welcome King Leopold. Especially after all our practice. Let's enjoy ourselves. We've got a party with music and lovely food. Yes, I suppose things haven't worked out too badly. King and Queen Marigold are here. Oh! oh no more pies. What's this? It's spaghetti vongole. OK. I'll give it a go. What will the marigolds say when they see that? <laughs> They'll laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and... Come on, Dolly. Where is King Leopold? Uh, well, he's there. There? <laughs> he's that gnome king. Look, he doesn't even wear a crown. Oh, I keep it under me hat. How humble he is. How modern. Oh, I feel positively overdressed. Me too. From now on, I'm going to wear a sack. Can we do the song now? Oh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> King Leopold, may I present the Elf and Fairy Band? Lovely. <laughs> Excuse me for interrupting, but I couldn't help noticing you've got a magic piano. Hello there. And no offence, but that fancy whiffy-waffy music is a waste of a good magic piano. Do you know any rock and roll? Rock and roll's my middle name. Wise old elf. Do you like rock and roll? Rock and roll? I most certainly do not like rock and roll. I'll take that as a yes. Over to you, Mr Piano. A bee bop a doo da a doo da do. Oh, if I must, bump your boos and wiggle your woo-ahs. Thank you very much. Oh, that was fun. I'm going to enjoy staying here. Oh, dear. We're stuck with him for weeks now. This gnome king is incredible. If only King Leopold would come and stay with us at our castle. I don't see why not. Just mention pies and he's all yours. I say, old boy, would you like to stay with us for a few weeks? There will be pies. <laughs> no, if there's pies involved, I'll stay with you forever. <laughs> A bee bop a doo da a doo da do. Are you looking forward to your first day at Fox Cubs, Ben? Yes, Dad. I loved being a fox cub when I was your age. I've still got my hat. In my day, it was Old Grey Wolf in charge. They've got a new leader now. I wonder who it is. Welcome to Fox Cubs, everybody. I'm the new leader. Hello, Hello Nanny, Nanny Plum. Plum. Don't call me Nanny Plum. I'm Fluffy Owl. To wit, to woo. Hi, Holly. Hi, Ben. Hi, 
Hello, Nanny Plum. What are you doing here? I'm the new Fox Cub leader. You have to call me Fluffy Owl. Twit to woo. Oh, hello, Fluffy Owl. You have to say the twit to woo bit as well. Tawit ta woo. You're just in time for the badges. Oh, is someone getting a badge? Ben, you're going to have so much fun getting your badges. Dad, what badges did you get when you were a fox cub? I got an adventure badge, a sailing badge and a knots badge. A knots badge? Yes. After days and days of tying knot after knot, I finally got my knots badge. It was hard work, but worth it. Who wants a badge? Me? Hey? Everyone step forward and tell me what badge you'd like. You first, Rosie. Can I have... Adventure badge, please. One adventure badge. But, but... Can I have a sailing badge? Of course. One sailing badge. Strawberry, what would you like? A knots badge, please. Here you go. Stop it. Stop it at once. You don't just hand out badges. Why not? You have to earn your badges. To get my adventure badge, I had to spend three days camping in the wild. Well, I watched a whole night of TV for my watching TV badge. Watching TV badge? That's not what the fox cubs are about. The fox cubs are about having adventures in the wild. Adventures do sound like fun. We like adventures. Mr Elf, can we have an adventure in the wild? Well, it's not up to me. It's up to Fluffy Owl. Oh, very well. Follow me, everyone. OK, here we are, having an adventure. What do we do? Well, imagine we had to look for food. How do we find food here? Fluffy Owl, why don't you show the children how to find food in the wild? All right. This way, everyone. Now they'll see. It's not easy to find food in the wild. Hiya! We found food. Ice cream! Ice cream? Yes, from the ice cream van over there. But that's cheating! Look, you said find some food, so we did. Now you're changing the rules. We got you a raspberry ripple, Mr Elf. OK, moving on from finding food. Does anybody know how to make a shelter? Oh, me! Me! I brought my tent. Watch this. There we go. Ooh. It's got five bedrooms, a bathroom, a television and even a cellar. Oh, it's amazing. The best tent in the world. We can't sleep in that. Why not? What's wrong with being comfortable when you're on holiday? This is an adventure, not a holiday. We'll make a shelter out of two twigs and a leaf. You lean the twigs up like this and... Hey, presto, what have you got? Two twigs and a leaf. Where's the bed? You sleep on the ground. It's nature's bed. Lovely and cosy. But why bother when you can sleep in my castle tent? You're missing the point. Do you fox cubs want a real adventure? Yes! Good. If you're going to learn how to survive in the wild, you have to be in the wild. Like, uh, at the top of a mountain. What? Fluffy Owl, please magic us to the top of a mountain. OK. Abracadabra. Wow, we're at the top of a real mountain. Fantastic. Now, how are we going to get home? Easy. I'll magic us home. Let's say you don't have your wand with you. OK, I'll call for help. No phone either. Hello, hello. But that's going to make it very, very difficult to get home. Exactly. But when you get home, you will have earned your adventure badge. So, what do we do first? Maybe we should start by working out which mountain we're on. Good, Ben. That's exactly what we should do. Fluffy Owl, which mountain did you magic us to? No idea. What? You just said a mountain. I don't know one mountain from another. Well, that makes things a bit tricky. Why? Because we don't even know what country we're in. Oh. Perhaps you should magic us back home and we'll start again. I can't. You threw my wand down the mountain. Oh, yes. Let's ring for help. 
But you threw Fluffy Owl's phone down the mountain too. Oh, yes. So I did. You wanted us to be lost. Now we're lost. Happy now? I'm sure Mr Elf wouldn't have sent us to the top of a mountain if he didn't know how to get us home. Thank you, Strawberry. OK, I think I can work out where we are by using my compass. Let's see. North is that way and the position of the sun is... Oh, my goodness! We're on Everest! What's that, then? Mount Everest! The tallest mountain in the whole world! Is Mount Everest far from home, Dad? A bit far from home, Ben, yes. And is it really very high? A bit high? Yes, Holly. I suppose we could just climb down. Just climb down? Just climb down Everest, the enormous, treacherous mountain of rock and ice, perilous cliff after perilous cliff that could only be conquered by the world's greatest mountaineers? So, Mount Everest is not safe for children to climb down? No, Mount Everest isn't child-friendly. So what do we do now, Mr Einstein? I don't know. Oh, if only we had my castle tent. <sighs> what good would that do? We could watch TV. Could the fairy fly for help? In that wind, you'd be blown away. No, what we need is someone who can climb down the mountain and fetch help. I know. Gaston is good at climbing. <coughs> good idea, Ben. Go, Gaston, go. Get help. <coughs> It may be some time before Gaston returns. After climbing down the mountain, he will have to journey through the jungle, cross the desert, swim the ocean before he arrives at the little kingdom. Hello, Gaston. <coughs> What's that? All the children and Fluffy Owl and Mr Elf all trapped at the top of a mountain, you say? <coughs> then this is a job for Old Grey Wolf. Ow! Lead the way, Gaston. Is this mountain far? Still further? Oh, are we nearly there? So, quite a way then. Gaston's been gone for ages. I hope he's all right. Gaston! And he's brought Old Grey Wolf. Oh, I'm very pleased to see you, Old Grey Donkey. It's Old Grey Wolf, and you have to say, Awoo! OK, Awoo! What's your plan, Old Grey Wolf? Awoo! Uh -oh. Have you brought the elf helicopter to lift us to safety? Or a team of mountain rescue elves to carry us down the mountain? Uh, actually, I, I set off in, in a bit of a hurry and you were a bit further away than I expected. So, you're just here on your own without a plan of any sort? Uh, yes. That's about it. Maybe you should do a bit of a magic? I'd love to. But he threw my wand away. So that's why I found it at the bottom of the mountain. Oh, it's good to have you back again. So, if you wouldn't mind um, magicking us back home? No problemo. Hooray! That was a really good adventure. Thank you, Fluffy Owl. Twit twoo. Well, you should thank Mr Elf. It was his idea. Thank you, Mr Elf. Yes, Dad. It was great. Ho, ho. And I think all of you fox cubs have earned your adventure badges. Indeed. Adventure badges for everyone. Thank, Thank you, Old Grey Wolf. Wow. And for fetching help in the fox cubs' hour of need, one of you has earned the rescue badge. Gaston, of course. <laughs> Gaston to the rescue! Oh. <laughs> Help! Help! We're lost in deep space. I can't believe they just left us behind. I hope they turn the spaceship around and come back for us. Yes, otherwise we'll be floating here together for all eternity. How long is eternity? A very, very long time. Oh, well, let's play a game while we're waiting. I spy with my little eye something beginning with S. 
Stars. Yes, you're good at this. Can I have another go? If you must. I spy with my little eye something beginning with, um, S. Stars. No, space. Ha! <laughs> you see, this is a really good game. This is going to be a very long eternity. Holiday, here we come. Soon, we will be at Planet Ball. But what about the wise old elf and nanny? Oh, we left them behind. Well, it was nice knowing them. No, Daddy. We have to go back for them. Yes, without Smarty Pants, we cannot make Planet Bong beautiful again. Stars. No. Space. No. Oh, all right. It was stars. Can I have another go? No. Oh. Wise old elf. Nanny. Saved. We're saved. Saved from an eternity of I Spy. Oh, don't worry. We can carry on on board. There's loads of things. Spaceship. Uh, space suit. Oh. Smarty pants. When we get to Planet Bong, you will make all the plants grow again. And uh, of course. Listen, Nanny, when we get to Planet Bong, I may need a little bit of help. Yes, I am the fairy helper, and I already helped you mend the flying saucer. Yes, this might be a bit bigger. How bigger? Big! We are here. Planet Bong. Wow! Planet Bong is all sand and hot. The perfect holiday planet. <gasps> We're going into the ground! I am home again, and I have brought Smarty Pants to save our planet. The great leader of Planet Bong is here to celebrate this special meeting of peoples. Hello! He's tiny! Yes. On Planet Bong, we get smaller as we get older. Hello! Who said that? <laughs> He's down there, Daddy. Oh, hello! Hello! Say hello, everybody. The great leader is very old. It is a fantastic honor for you to meet him. Say hello, Gaston. <laughs> hello! <gasps> Gaston's eaten the great leader! Uh. Naughty Gaston, spit the great leader out! <coughs> <coughs> Terribly sorry, he's not really house-trained. Uh, yes. <coughs> As our special guests, we will now welcome you with a song. What a horrible noise! When are they going to start playing the tune? This is our national anthem. And delightful it is, too. Cyrus, why do you live underground? Once, Planet Bong was covered in plants. Everywhere was green and beautiful, and the people were happy. Then the plants began to die out. It became too hot to live on the surface, so we moved underground. Everyone lives underground? Yes, even the animals. Animals? <laughs> Whoa! Ah, an alien monster! Don't worry, it is just a flobber gurgle quad splog. It is a pet. <laughs> oh, the flobber gurgle quad splog is so cute. <laughs> Mummy, can we take the flobber gurgle quad splog back home with us, please? I think it is much happier living here, darling. Oh. Um, when do we go to the beach? Now. We will take the lift. Lovely big beach. But where's the sea? There is no sea. So where can we swim? Nowhere. There is no water. Not for swimming, not for drinking, not for anything. Nothing but sand. 
Yes, just sand and sand and sand and sand and sand. Yes, Planet Bong is sand and sand and sand. Planet Bong is doomed! So, this isn't a holiday? No, it's a rescue mission, Your Majesty. Yes, Smarty Pants is here to save us. Please, Smarty Pants. Make the plants grow? Uh, yes. I've given this problem a lot of thought, and I believe that I, Smarty Pants, have the answer. Good. So, without further ado, I will hand over to my fairy helper. Me? Yes. Just magic the plants up, would you? Oh, right. It is very excellent. Thank you. My pleasure. Now, please do the rest of the planet. What? The whole planet? Yes. But I'm Nanny Plum, not an interplanetary terraforming bioengineer. Do you mean this is it? Yes. Plants aren't easy to do. Lots of fiddly bits. Oh. So, Smarty Pants, you cannot save us after all. Uh, well, no. Thank you for trying. So, Planet Bong will never again have lots of plants and be beautiful once more? No. Wait a minute. Plants need water to grow. Yes. And if you had lots of water, you could have lots of plants. Yes. So, we just need to make it rain. I can do that. Rain's much easier to make than plants. It's just water. Then, please, make it rain. Magic wand on Planet Bong. Make it rain loud and strong. Nothing is happening. Did the magic work? Yes, it worked. Look up. Clouds. Yes, and lots of them. And clouds mean... Rain! <laughs> Coming back! Yay! Gosh, they're growing so fast! Yes, they needed water. The flowers look so pretty and smell so lovely. It's an alien paradise! Thank you so much. You have saved Planet Bong. It's all so lovely. An innocent, unspoiled world of nature. Gentle and beautiful in its loveliness. Yes. Right, lads. Back to work. What's happening? We are starting up our factories again. Supposed to make all that smoke? Yes, they always do that. How lovely. And now you can have your holiday. Uh, you know what? I think we'll just go home. Very well. I will take you home. <laughs> Next stop, Planet Earth. <laughs> You are home. Thank you again, Smarty Pants. Oh, it was nothing. For you, maybe. I magicked up a whole planet's worth of rain. To honour our alien guests, the Elf Band will now play a tune. Uh, are you sure that's a good idea? Oompa, 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 what beautiful music! Is this your national anthem? Ah, uh, who knows? It could be. It is wonderful. And now I must return to Planet Bong. Today's adventure starts at the Little Castle. Mr Elf takes a holiday. Food delivery! Ah, thank goodness. Breakfast at last. Yes, sorry, I'm running a bit late today. I have a splendid King's breakfast for you, though. Egg and baked beans. 
egg and beans. But today is Tuesday. We have muffins on Tuesday. Tuesday already? What happened to Monday? That was yesterday. Was it? You've been working too hard, Mr Elf. No, no, no. I'm fine. You need a holiday. Yay! A holiday! And you can come too, Holly. Ooh, can I, Daddy? Yes, of course, Holly. Have a good time. But... I can't have a holiday. Who will make my deliveries? Nanny Plum can. No, I can't. Of course you can. Any fool can drive a truck. What? But, but I'm the king, remember? And I sentence you to a holiday. Hello, Mrs Elf. I have some terrible, terrible news. Oh, no. What is it? King Thistle. What about him? Has sentenced me to... Prison? I won't stand for it. <coughs> Revolution! Up with the elves! Down with the king! <coughs> it's worse than that. He has sentenced me to... A holiday! Oh, my goodness! I knew you'd be upset. This is wonderful! We never go on holiday. What are you talking about? We went to the seaside. That was a day trip. And we went to the moon. But you left me behind. Oh, yes. Very well. Let's go on holiday. Hooray! This is the plan. First, we take the elf plane and fly somewhere nice. Oh, lovely! We have a quick snack. Yes. Then we'll pack up and fly back home in time for me to do my evening delivery. That's not a holiday! Now listen to me, Mr Elf. You're taking us away for at least a week to somewhere hot and you're going to relax. But I'm an elf and elves don't like relaxing. Well, you just have to learn. It's going to be fun, Mr Elf. <sighs> All right. But this is an elf holiday, so no magic wands, Holly. OK, Mr Elf. And no pets. Oh, <laughs> Dad! It's my holiday. I make the rules. Sorry, Gaston. You have to stay here. Bye-bye, <coughs> Gaston. <laughs> Come on, everyone. We're going to be late for the holiday. <coughs> Please, Mr Elf, try to have fun. All right. I'll try. Ready for takeoff? Yes! Let's go! I can't relax now. What if something goes wrong? Oh, don't be silly. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, no! What is it, Dad? The engine has broken. We'll have to land. Where are we? In the middle of nowhere. It's just water down there. Prepare for a big splash. A desert island. Good. Everyone out. Wow. A real desert island. Brilliant, isn't it? It is very pretty. What a lovely beach. Stranded on a desert island. Now what do we do? Darling, there are worse places to be stuck. Yes, we can have our holiday here. Who'd like some lemonade? But after the holiday, how do we get home? We could send a message in a bottle. Clever Ben. That's what people on desert islands do. We write a rescue note, put the note in the bottle and then throw it out to sea. Then all we have to do is wait until someone finds it. Fantastic! And how long does that normally take? Usually about 20 years. What? Well, there's no rush. But what about the Little Kingdom? What about the Great Elf Tree? What about my elf deliveries? Oh, stop worrying. I'm sure the elf delivery can manage without you. Fairy delivery! Ah, Nanny Plum. Have you brought my potato? You always have potatoes, so I brought you an onion. What? Why? For a change. Have you got my baked beans? 
I've got you a pineapple. But I don't like pineapple. What about my sausages? I've got you some blue cheese. But I hate blue cheese. Oh, you're such a bunch of fuss pots. Honestly. It was better when Mr Elf did the deliveries. Yes, he knew a sausage when he saw one. Well, you'll just have to make do with me. Mr Elf is on holiday, having fun. Stuck on a desert island. I am so bored. Do try and relax, darling. I can't. I need something to do. That's not relaxing. It is for me. I relax by being very busy. Maybe I'll explore the island. I could work out how big it is. Do you think there'll be anyone else on the island? No, I don't think so. <gasps> Footsteps. <gasps> so something does live here. Yes, a wild beast. Let's follow its tracks and find it. All right, but we must take care. The wild beast might be dangerous. The tracks lead to this bush. There's something in there. The wild beast. It's Gaston! Yeah. How did you get here? What's that? You hid in the plane, swam ashore when we weren't looking, and hid in the bushes, you say? Clever Gaston! But I thought I said no pets! Gaston could be useful, Dad! Gaston, we need food. Can you find some? <laughs> Gaston's good at sniffing out food. <gasps> A coconut! It's huge! Yes, enough food and drink to last us for weeks. Well done, Gaston. Stand clear! Hooray! You know, this holiday isn't so bad after all. I shall call this place Elf Island. Ben and Holly have been gone for ages. I do miss them. Me too. Oh, what's that? It's a message in a bottle. <gasps> it's from Ben. It says, trapped on a desert island, Dad bored, please rescue. Let's go and tell the wise old elf. Wise old elf! Wise old elf! We found a message in a bottle from Ben Elf. Oh, my goodness. Launch Elf Rescue. We have a family to save. Elf Rescue, our go. Dinner time. Who wants coconut? Ugh. We've had coconut every day for weeks. Coconut soup, coconut pie, coconut pancakes, curried coconut. Ah, oh, but tonight it's coconut surprise. What's the surprise? It's coconut. <sighs> coconut surprise? Delicious. Mmm, who's having a great time? I know I am. I want to go home. Me too. Yes, I do too. Home? I can't go home. I've got too much work to do here. I need to finish the hut, start on the garden, and I haven't even thought about the plumbing. No, the last thing I want to do now is go home. It's Elf Rescue! Hooray! Hello. We're here to take you home. Oh, thank you. But I haven't finished my work on Elf Island. But there's work for you back home. Nanny Plum hasn't quite got the hang of the deliveries. I wanted a potato and she brought me an onion. Onions instead of potatoes? That's crazy. I'll have to sort that out. So home we go. Bye-bye, Elf Island. Yes, bye-bye, Elf Island. I have to admit, that's the best holiday I've ever had. Happy Father's Day, Papa. I made you breakfast. Oh, thank you, Strawberry. Look at your card. To the nicest Papa in the world. How sweet. And no work for you today. You get the day off. 
That sounds good, but what shall I do? You can play. Who will I play with? The other daddies, of course. It's Father's Day for every daddy. Morning, Dad. Breakfast. Oh, what a lovely card, Ben. It's a picture of me waving from the elf truck. <gasps> the truck! I've got to make my food deliveries. No, Mr Elf. You've got the day off. But, but... Don't worry. Someone else is doing your deliveries. Oh, really? Who? Food delivery! Come and get it! What? Nanny Plum? Hello, Mr Elf. I'm in charge of your deliveries today. So you just sit back and relax. Sit back and relax with Nanny doing my deliveries. Where's the brave? Oops! Oh, dear. Morning time. Hey, what? Happy Father's Day, Daddy. Ah, breakfast in bed. If only every day could start like this. But every day does start like this. You always have breakfast in bed. Ah, yes. Read your card, Daddy. You're the best daddy in the universe. <laughs> and today, you can do whatever you like. Yes, you're not the king today. You're just my daddy. Marvellous. Now, make sure Mrs Fig's egg is nice and fresh. And don't forget the orange for Mrs Peach. Right, a peach for Mrs Orange. No, an orange for Mrs Peach. Yes, yes, whatever. Hey, hey, you forgot the egg. Hello there. It's the king. Hooray! Oh, I'm not the king today. I'm just a humble daddy, like you lot. And today, all the daddies have to play. Yes, here's a ball. Oh, ho ho! To you, Dad. To you, Your Majesty. To you. Oops. Yeah! It's Redbeard the Elf Pirate. Which scurvy scoundrel will be shooting cannonballs at me now? Uh, that would be me. Oh, begging your pardon, King Thistle. That's quite all right. I'm just a normal daddy today. All the daddies have the day off. Because it's Father's Day. Ah, I know. And that's why I brought this here card. Hello, Nigel. Hello, Fred. Seen Dad today. Hello. I've come to join in the fun. I'm sorry, wise old elf, but you have to be a daddy to have the day off. Actually, Holly, I am a daddy. I have three sons. Three sons? Yes, but I don't talk about it much. It's a bit uh, embarrassing. My eldest boy ran off to sea to make his fortune. He has a big red beard and he's a, a pirate. Happy Father's Day, Dad! Thank you, son. And from me too, Dad. Thank you. Redbeard, you never said the wise old elf was your dad. Well, pirates don't like to admit they have mummies and daddies. True, but they all do, and that's a fact. Captain Squid! Aha! What are you doing here, you scurvy old rogue? I'm keeping an eye on you, you blackguard, so you don't steal my treasure. Scallywag! Scoundrel! Ha-ha! Happy Father's Day, Dad. Thank you, son. What? Captain Squid is your son, too? That's, that's right! Oh, two of my son's pirates. But at least I have one son who's sensible. Guess what, Dad? I have decided to be a Viking. Ha-ha! Oh. <laughs> Food delivery! Oh, good. I ordered an egg. I've got an egg, but I've got an orange. Have you brought my orange? Sorry, Mrs Peach. Just out of oranges. Here's some broccoli instead. I don't like broccoli. Oh, but it's good for you. This is a lettuce, but I ordered a cabbage. Oh, for goodness sake. You're all so grumpy. We're only grumpy because you muddled our delivery. It's not like when Mr Elf does it. Oh, here. You can help yourselves. <laughs> Food delivery. Bye. <laughs> to you, Ben. To you. Let's see how high I can kick the ball. Ah! Ben? Hello, Mum. Did you kick this ball? Um... No, it was, uh, me. Oh, dear. This father...
Mother's Day game has got a bit silly, hasn't it? It's not as bad as last Mother's Day. Yes, you mummies know how to party. <laughs> Do you know what time it is? Yes, it's Mother's Day. <laughs> yes, maybe we did go a bit wild. Come on, daddies. Let's play in the meadow. Hooray! Let's play basketball. We'll need two nets. We'll need a referee. dum de dum de dee de doo Nanny, we need a referee for our game. OK, what's the game? Basketball. Never heard of it. One team has to throw the ball into this net and the other team has to throw the ball into that net. And you can only... OK, OK, I don't need to know all the little details. Let's start. But I haven't finished telling you the rules. Yes, yes. Go on, Ben. Throw it in the net. Goal! Nanny, in basketball, you don't say goal. You say... Yes, yes. I'm awarding you five points. But that's too many. I decide the rules. I'm the referee. Carry on. Remember, Daddy, you mustn't kick the ball. Oh, I see. I'll use magic then. Aha! <laughs> Goal! You can't use magic. It's Father's Day. What has magic got to do with Father's Day? Yellow card for being naughty. But I'm the king. Red card for talking back. Play on! <laughs> to that team. No, no, that's too many points. Oh, this will take forever. Let's make it easier. What if the ball had legs? <laughs> then it could score on its own. Hooray! This is too easy. OK, I'll make it harder. I'll give the next legs too. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. Why don't you add some dragons? <laughs> For good measure. Oh, that's a good idea, wise old elf. Dragons! <laughs> ah, so this is basketball. What a fun game. Well done, wise old elf, for suggesting it. But, but, but. Game over. What's the score, Nanny? What score would you like? Can we have a hundred million? OK, a hundred million points to this team. Hooray! We have a hundred million too. Yes, a hundred million points to that Hooray! team. Oh, that means it's a draw. Hooray! Oh, what a great Father's Day this has been. It'll be hard getting back to my work tomorrow. Yes, it'll be hard getting back to my food deliveries again. Oh, the deliveries. Uh, I'm afraid it all went a bit wrong today. Mrs Peach wanted an orange and Nanny gave her broccoli. And I think I gave Mr Egg a peach. Or was it the other way round? It'll take weeks to sort this out. I'm quite looking forward to it. I really enjoyed Father's Day. It's a shame it's over. There's still a tiny bit of Father's Day left, Papa. I'll read you a bedtime story. <laughs> Thank you, Strawberry. Ready? Once upon a time... A big bad wolf came along to the straw house and he huffed and he puffed and then there was a loud knock on the door. Who could that be? said the princess. With a yo-ho-ho, -ho, the pirates set sail across the deep blue sea. Does the story have to be about pirates? Not about pirates. What else could the story be about? How about Vikings? Oh, OK. Vikings, then. The Vikings set sail across the deep blue sea. And on the way, they met a pirate! yo ho, -ho! <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad being a father. Not bad at all. Hello, everybody. May I present my new boat, Bunty 2. Bunty 2? Yes. You remember my old boat, Bunty? Bunty was a lovely boat. Yes, Bunty was a lovely boat. Until she met Big Bad Barry. You all know what happened then. Barry ate 
Bunty. Yes, Barry has eaten every boat I've ever made. But now I've built Bunty 2. My best boat ever. Six bedrooms, three bathrooms, a kitchen, a sun lounge. The ideal boat for a cruise to a tropical paradise. A cruise to a tropical paradise? How wonderful! And Bunty 2 doesn't run on clockwork. She runs on batteries. So she's super fast. to stop Big Bad Barry eating this boat. Aha! I have a brilliant plan. What's the plan? Bunty 2 is never going in the water. Never going in the water? Yes. Barry is not going to eat Bunty 2. This is ridiculous. Why did you build a boat that you're not going to put in the water? Just for something to do. So we're not sailing to the tropical paradise? Nope. Oh, Dad! I thought we were all going on holiday. I've got a good idea. As your king, I command you to put Bunty 2 in the water and sail us to the tropical paradise. But what about Big Bad Barry? Don't worry. If Barry eats Bunty 2, I'll take full responsibility. What does that mean? You can blame it on me. The king is so wise. But, but... Good. That's sorted then. We're going on holiday. OK, but if we're going to do it, I'm in charge. And that means... Oh, this is an elf holiday, so no magic. <coughs> Yay! A holiday! Next stop, the ocean! Yes, but first we have to get past Barry. You worry too much, Mr Elf. Maybe Barry won't turn up. Oh, look! There's Barry! Ah! What do we do? What do we do? There's just one chance. Bunty 2 is super fast. It's working, Mr Elf. We're faster than Barry. We've left Barry really far behind. Good. He's given up. Hooray! Right, everybody. Let's sail to the tropics and swim among the corals. We're going on holiday, we're going on holiday. We're going on holiday to a tropical paradise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr Elf, it's lovely to see you so relaxed. Yes, with Barry far away, I'm actually enjoying this holiday. We're here, in the tropical ocean. Let's go diving. Cool. <laughs> Mrs Elf, are you coming diving? Um, no thanks. I need to catch up on some important reading. Right all. See you later. Chapter one. I was just a young servant girl, and Squire Trevelyan, with his dark, broody looks and mane of black hair, was being very grumpy. I didn't like him at all. This is the coral reef. Amazing! Yes, it's all so pretty. Do you think we'll bump into anyone else down here? In the middle of a vast ocean? We're not going to bump into anyone. Ah, watch where you're going. Oh, I'm most terribly sorry. I didn't see you there. Well, I am here, and I'm not pleased to be bumped into. Not pleased at all. It's Captain Squid, the pirate. Yes, it is I, Captain Squid, and I'm here burying the treasure. Burying your treasure? At the bottom of the ocean? The thing is, every place I bury my treasure, it gets found. So I thought if I bury it at the bottom of the ocean, where no people ever visit, maybe, just maybe, my treasure might stay hidden. It's not too much to ask, is it? Well, we're very sorry to disturb you. We'll be on our way. Yes, be off with you. Get your own ocean to swim in. Uh, hang on a moment. There is, uh, something you could help me with. What's that? It's a bit embarrassing, but, uh, I haven't got a boat to sail home in. Can I have a lift? 
But what happened to your boat? It got eaten by a big fish. Barry! Barry's here! The fish that ate my boat had big eyes. That's Barry. And a big mouth. That's Barry! And eight legs. That's not Barry. A fish with eight legs? Yes, it's a giant octopus and it's swimming towards your boat. Ah, I have to warn Mrs Elf. And then Squire Trevelyan said, Here is the great secret I must tell you. The person I truly love is... Yes, this had better be important. Yes, uh, don't panic, but there is something swimming towards you. Oh, yes, what sort of a something? Uh, a sort of hungry giant octopus with eight legs something. Oh, yes, I see it. What should I do? Would you mind telling it not to eat my boat? Now, listen here, Mr Octopus. This boat is not for eating. What's happening? The octopus seems to be eating your boat. Quick, to the surface! Naughty octopus! Stop eating! Stop at once, I say! <laughs> ah, my boat! Eaten! I said this would happen! No, you said your boat would be eaten by Big Bad Barry, but it was eaten by a giant octopus. It's a disaster! Don't worry. I said I'd take responsibility, and I will. And? That's it. I've taken responsibility. Fine. Well, I hate to ask, but Nanny Plum, can you magic a boat up so we can go home? No. Why not? Because you said blah, 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 no magic, and you took my wand away, remember? Oh, yes. So I did. So, we're stranded here. No, I've just had a brilliant Mr Elf idea. I'll build a raft out of the wreckage. And we'll help you. Yes, Dad. We'll lash the pieces together with rope. There, finished. May I present Bunty 3? What's Bunty 3? This boat. Bunty 2 was prettier. It's not meant to be pretty. It's a raft. I know what a raft is. Where's the bathroom? Is it downstairs? Ah, there isn't a downstairs. Don't be too harsh on Nanny. She doesn't know as much about rafts as us sailors. By the way, where's the kitchen? Is that downstairs too? Yes, it's probably next to the sitting room. This is a raft. There aren't sitting rooms and kitchens and bathrooms. It's not very luxurious then, is it? No, it's not. But it will get us home. And so, Squire Trevelyan turned out to be nice after all. And I married him. The end. My Goodness! That was a surprise ending. Land ahoy! We're home! Yes, but that means we're near to Big Bad Barry. Stop worrying, Mr Elf. Barry might not turn up. Oh, look! There's Barry! Oh, he's been waiting for us all this time. How sweet. He's going to eat Bunty 3. Yum, yum. Ah! Abandoned ship! Abandoned ship! Don't worry, everyone. Whatever happens, I will take full responsibility. That makes everything all right, then. My boat is gone. Gone into Barry's tummy. Curse you, Big Bad Barry. You'll never eat another boat of mine. Never. Never. Because I'm not going to build a boat ever again. Ooh. I think you've upset Barry, Mr Elf. Look at his sad little face. <laughs> he is crying. I've never seen a fish cry. You shouldn't be so unkind to Barry. What? Yes, Barry doesn't mean any harm. Doesn't mean any harm? Mr Elf, as your king, I command you to build another boat for Barry. Eh? What sort of boat would you like, Barry? A sailing boat? Yum, yum. A sailing boat for Barry, please, Mr Elf. King Thistle is so wise. Yes, we are very lucky. Today's adventure starts at Gaston's house. Gaston is lost. <laughs> <laughs> Gaston, are you in? <laughs> 
Gaston, fetch the stick. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Gaston's taking a while. Yes. Where is he? Princess Holly! Home time! Oh, that's Nanny Plum. Ben! <coughs> home time! And that's my mum. Bye, everyone. See you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Let's play with Gaston. Yes. yes. Gaston? It's empty. Where is Gaston? 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 Good morning, children. Has anyone seen Gaston today? No. Has anyone seen Gaston? No. Has anyone seen the ladybug? No. Gaston is lost. Nanny. 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 Have you seen Gaston? Gaston? No. Come to think of it, I haven't seen him at all today. He usually comes in for his breakfast first thing in the morning. But he hasn't touched his food. Gaston is lost. Don't worry, Holly. We can find Gaston by looking in a crystal ball. Let's use this one. It's a snow globe. With a little Eiffel Tower inside. Yes, pretty, isn't it? There you go. Paris in the snow. It's almost like you're there. But how can a snow globe find Gaston? Ah, that's where we need a little magic. The snow is clearing. Ooh. That's Gaston's house. There's Gaston. The crystal ball is showing us what Gaston did yesterday. And then we can work out where he is. Very clever, Nanny. Not just a pretty face, eh? Where's he going? That's me, feeding Gaston yesterday. Good morning, Gaston. Here's your breakfast. <laughs> Hungry boy. Where would you be without me to feed you? Now where's he going? He's at the fairy village. Morning, Gaston. That's my mum. Here's your breakfast. <laughs> He's had two breakfasts. I thought it was just me who fed him. Bye, Gaston. He's off again. He's at the great elf tree. And that's the wise old elf. Ah, Gaston, I haven't forgotten you. Here's your breakfast. I don't believe it. That's another breakfast. Oh, Gaston's off again. He can't eat any more breakfasts. Look, he's at the playgroup. And that's Mrs Fotheringill. Here's your porridge, Susan. Susan? Good girl, Susan. By my reckoning, that's four breakfasts. I think Gaston needs lots of food because he does lots of running about. <sighs> Surprised after all that eating. <laughs> Look, it's us. Yes, we played with Gaston yesterday. Gaston, are you in? <coughs> Do you want to play? <laughs> Here, Gaston, fetch the stick. We know this bit. Can you skip past it? OK, I'll fast forward. <laughs> Gaston has vanished. Let's watch that again. Stop! There he is. Forward a bit. Oh, he's disappeared. Back a bit. Forward. Gone. He jumps behind those clovers and disappears. So that's where he must be. Come on, we have to find him. Let's get the others to help. Why is old elf? Why is old elf? Gaston needs rescuing! You found him? 
Not exactly, but we know where he was before he disappeared. This is where Gaston was last seen. And then he vanished behind some clovers. Which clovers? There are lots here. We'll have to search all of them. Gaston? Gaston! Where are you, Gaston? This is crazy. How can anyone just disappear into thin air? Ah! Oh, where's my mum gone? Help! Help! Mum, where are you? Here! Uh, I can't see you. Are you invisible? No! Look down! Gosh, a hole in the ground. I can't see a thing. Wand, give me light. It's a huge cave. Ooh! Ooh. It's full of sparkly diamonds and gems. Ah, looks like we've found a bit of the old dwarf mine. Yes, the little kingdom is riddled with dwarf tunnels. Those dwarfs certainly like to dig. Help! Help! Mum! Hello, everyone. I found Gaston. <laughs> Gaston! Come on, everyone. We've got a ladybird to rescue. Uh, what about me? Oh, yes. Sorry, Mum. I forgot about you. Charming. Let's climb down. It's a good thing I brought the elf rescue rope. Here we come. Whee! <laughs> Whee! Well, Gaston! <laughs> Gaston must be so hungry. <laughs> I can hear voices. Someone's coming. Hide, everyone. In our dwarf mine, oh so old. We dig for diamonds, we dig for gold. <gasps> it's the dwarves. Dinner time. <coughs> Good boy. <coughs> when you finish that, there's pudding. I don't believe it. Gaston's only been here a day. And he's already got people feeding him. Right, lads. Back to work. Dig, dig, dig. Dig, dig, dig. Lucky the dwarves didn't spot us. They don't like strangers in their minds. Yes. That's why I took the precaution of hiding the elf rope. If the dwarves had seen the rope hanging from the top of the cave, they would have known someone was in here. I'm not called the wise one for nothing. Um, but if the rope's down here, how are we going to climb out? Don't worry. The wise one will have thought of that. He'll have a brilliant plan. Ah, oh, uh, it, this is a bit embarrassing. I, uh, uh, uh... So, the wise one pulled the rope down, but forgot that we need to climb up it to get out. Yes, that's about it. No worries, we'll just fly out. But, but us elves can't fly. Oh, OK. I'll magic the rope to the top. Ooh. Come on, everyone, let's go. Climbing up? I am not climbing up a magic rope. See yourself. You can live down there forever. Okay, okay. I'll climb up the magic rope. Hello, everyone. Oh, hello, Mrs. Fotheringill. What are you doing here? I came as quick as I could when I heard Susan was in trouble. Susan? Who's Susan? Susan the Ladybug. <laughs> oh, there you are. <laughs> That's Gaston. <laughs> he won't answer if you call him Susan. Susan, I've brought you something to eat. <laughs> Poor Susan. Who would look after you if I didn't? Hmm? I've got a feeling Susan would manage just fine. <laughs> 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 Isn't it 
lovely, having a picnic in the Little Kingdom. What's the Little Kingdom? You know, Daddy, where our friends, the fairies and elves, live. Now, Lucy, we've talked about this. Fairies and elves don't exist. But they do, Daddy. Yes, darling. You've met them yourself. Oh, <laughs> it's a charming idea, and I've joined in the game before, but let's not be silly. That's like saying talking animals exist. <laughs> Hi, Lucy. Ah, the talking animal. It's me, Ben Elf. Oh, hello, Ben. Why are you a rabbit? Holly magicked me into one by accident. <laughs> <laughs> ah! uh, was that a talking animal? Help! Help! Rex, come back! <laughs> Rex, no! Naughty dog! <laughs> Hello, Lucy. Oh, hello, Holly. Have you seen a talking rabbit anywhere? Yes, he was here just now. <laughs> here I am. Naughty Ben. When we magic you into things, you shouldn't run away. Can you change me back? Of course. <laughs> Phew, that's better. Now let's play a sensible game. Let's play catch. To you, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> to you, Violet. <laughs> I wish I could play in your games, but I'm too big. No problem. I can just shrink you down. <laughs> Whoa! Wow, I'm tiny. <laughs> You're one of the little people now, Lucy. Will I be like this forever? No, only till the morning. You'll be big again tomorrow. Can you make Rex <laughs> little too? <laughs> now you can do all the things we do. Ooh, can I go for a ride on Gaston? <laughs> OK. Hold on to his feelers. Push forward to start. Whoa! And then pull back to fly. Whee! <laughs> Don't pull too far back. You'll lose the loop. Whoa! <laughs> that was really fun. Can I visit your houses? Of course. Would you like to see inside the great elf tree? Or the little castle? Or come to my house? Where is your house, Strawberry? Me and Violet live in the fairy village. Ooh, I'd love to see the fairy village. OK, follow me. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are, the fairy village. Wow, do you all live inside toadstools? Yes, we used to live inside mushrooms, but the big people kept picking them. No one eats toadstools. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no door to get in. Yes, there is. It's a magic door. You have to tap three times and spin around and say, Open Sesame. See? Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, Daddy. My dad's the fairy mayor. Yes, and you're here just in time for the meeting. What meeting? Emergency meeting! Emergency meeting! As your mayor, I have called an emergency meeting because there are big people in the meadow. <laughs> Two grown-ups, one little girl and a dog having a picnic. Now, as you all know, the big people are dangerous. I'll say they stepped on my granddad. And they ate my house. So we must be very careful. And if anyone sees any big people, sound the alarm! <laughs> I've seen a big person. What? Where? Who? Me. I'm a big person. Ah! A big person! Sound the alarm! Ah! Big person! Oh! Don't they like me? Don't worry, Lucy. It's not your fault you're a big person. You're a little person now anyway. Lucy is our friend. Yes. Look at her feet. They're far too small to step on anyone. Yes, she does seem a bit small for a big person. Holly shrunk me down. Oh, I see. But Lucy is our friend, whether she is big or small. In that case, we are forgetting our manners. Lucy, would you like to join us for lunch as our special guest? Lunch? Sorry, I just remembered. I'm having a picnic with Mum and Dad. We'll take you back. Come on. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 
elves. True, darling. There really are elves and fairies. And talking rabbits? Well, that's a new one on me, but obviously there are. No, I can't believe it. We must have imagined it all. Hi, Mum. Hi, Dad. Ah! Lucy? Yes, Holly shrunk me down to be a little person today. Oh, that's nice, isn't it, darling? Hmm. Don't worry, she won't be little forever. Just until the morning. I know. You could stay for a sleepover tonight. Oh, wow. Could I? Of course. There's lots of room in the little castle. That would be brilliant. Can I? Uh, I think that would be fine. Have a nice time. Great. Bye, Mum and Dad. See you in the morning. <laughs> mm. Talking rabbits? Elves? Fairies? Shrunken daughter? Come on, darling. Let's get you home. Yeah. Nanny, say hello to Lucy. Lucy? Who's Lucy? You know Lucy. Do I? She's normally a bit bigger. Oh, Lucy the big person. Hello. Normally a lot bigger, I'd say. I shrunk her down. Lucy has come to join us for a sleepover. Well, what will happen when she grows big in the morning? The castle will explode. Don't worry. We'll make sure Lucy is out of the castle before the morning. All right, then. And Gaston and Rex can sleep in the kitchen. <coughs> what? <coughs> oh, all right, then. <coughs> as long as they don't leave any muddy footprints. Oh! <coughs> This is my bedroom. <laughs> we can have a midnight feast. Yes, you have to have a midnight feast at a sleepover. It's the law. <laughs> Gosh, I'm tired. Me too. And me. <sighs> is it midnight yet? No. <sighs> Midnight is still hours away. But I'm so sleepy. <sighs> <sighs> We've got to stay up until midnight, or it's not a real midnight feast. Dum dee dum dee 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 doo dee dee dee. Oh my goodness, Rex! What are you doing here? It's morning. You could grow big again any second. Quickly! You're starting to grow! Ah! Ow, you go! Just in time! That could have been disastrous! <sighs> What's all the noise about? You woke us up! Holly, where's Lucy? Shh! She's still asleep! What? Well, wake her up! And get her out of the castle! Quickly! Before she gets big! Oh, yeah! Too late. Gosh, what a funny way to wake up. Lucy, are you all right? I'm fine, thank you. Morning, all. Is Lucy around? Uh, yes. I just wanted to say sorry. Big people aren't all about smashing our houses and stepping on us. Ow! Oops, sorry, Mr Mayor. I didn't mean to step on you. That's quite all right. I couldn't have been stepped on by a nicer person. Um, how am I going to get out of the castle? Oh, a bit of magic will fix that. Phew. Thanks, Nanny Plum. Lucy, home time. That's my mum. I've got to go now. Thanks for the great time. Yes, it was fun. Next time we'll come to your place. Ooh, that would be great. Bye. 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 There you are. Hi, Lucy. Did you have a nice time? It was the best sleepover ever, wasn't it, Rex? <laughs> <laughs> what on earth?
earth is that? Hello, everyone. Wow, a talking card. Uh, who sent you? Granny Thistle. My mother. And I am here to invite you all to a magical party. Party, party. To get to the party, you'll need to catch the magic bus. Oh, dear. I'm always a bit worried when we go there. Granny's house is so full of magic. But don't you fairies like magic? Yes, but Granny and Grandpapa like dangerous magic. So their house isn't very child-friendly. That's one way of putting it. Hello! Ah! Magic in the elf tree. Shoo! You're invited to a magical party. Me? There must be some mistake. You are the wise old elf? Yes. You're invited to Granny Sissel's party. You'll need to catch the magic bus. Oh, dear. Hmm. This magic bus is very late. Oh, hello, wise old elf. Are you coming to Granny's party? Uh, yes. I seem to have been invited. I was at college with your Granny and Grandpapa a long, long time ago. Typical. You wait ages for a magic bus, then three come at once. All aboard! I don't like this. There's no driver. I don't need a driver. I'm a magic bus. Hold tight. Going up. Whoa! I really don't like this. Next stop, Granny and Grandpapa's. <laughs> When we get to Granny and Grandpapa's, don't touch anything that looks magical. Yes, Mummy. Remember, Granny's magic can be a bit strong. Yes, Daddy. What about Grandpapa Thistle? Grandpapa Thistle? Oh, he's completely bonkers. Whatever you do, don't ask him about his hobbies. Grandpapa Papa. Grandpapa Papa. <laughs> Last stop, Granny and Grandpapa. <laughs> Everybody off! Ooh. Wow! A castle in the clouds! Ooh. Let's ring the bell. No, Ben. Don't touch it. Don't touch anything. I'll ring the bell. Oh, it seems to be an ordinary bell this time. Usually something jumps. Ooh. Ah. I am Surprisa the Spider. <laughs> Hello, Mother. Oh, you guessed it was me. Hello, Granny. Darlings, darlings, darlings. Hello, Granny Thistle. Hello, Ben. Welcome to my party. Ah, oh, Cedric. Hello, Millicent. Come along inside, darlings. We're going to have such fun. Got a rainbow inside your house. Yes, rainbows are so much better than stairs, unless the weather changes. Oh dear, looks like a storm is brewing. Oh, maybe you should think about getting some ordinary stairs one day, Mother. Ordinary stairs? What would be the fun in that? Who'd like a fairy cake? Cakes are amazing. Mmm, yum, yum, yum. Delicious. Of course, they are magical fairy cakes. Mummy, why can't we have magic cakes like this? We don't need to do everything by magic, darling. Honestly, it's as if your parents think the magic will run out if they use it too much. Cedric, you're not eating. Will you have a fairy cake? Well, all right. Whoa! I'm flying! Put me down! Oh, well, if you insist. Ah! Magic always leads to trouble. But you used to love magic. That was a long time ago. Thank goodness none of you could see me then. Oh, I think I've got some old pictures somewhere. Did you like magic? In those days, 
I wasn't the wise old elf. I was a foolish young elf. We had such fun. You simply adored magic. Yes, but that was before the incident of the monkey kittens. <gasps> the monkey kittens. What happened? I think I've got a picture of that too. No. Oh, well, another time. Now for the party games. Hooray! We still have to finish Hide and Seek from last time. We never found Grandpapa. He's been hiding for a year. Hiding? For a whole year? Yes. He does take the game very seriously. We'll find him. Leave it to us. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpapa, where are you? What's that? It's a shoe tree. Wow. <laughs> Grandpapa Thistle. Grandpapa. Swimming through the air. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> Grandpa, Papa, Papa, Papa. Grandpa, Papa, 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 Papa. Bless me, it's the twins. You found me at last. Grandpapa. And Holly, my dear. Did I win the game? Hello, Dad. Have you really been hiding there all year? If a game's worth playing, it's worth playing right. Hello, Victor. Cedric, old bean. This is my best friend, Ben. Delighted to meet you, Ben. Don't ask him about his hobbies. What's that? Hobbies? You want to hear about my hobbies? Uh, well... Did you know I've been doing some inventing? Yes. Last year, you showed us your jam trousers. Did I? What about my custard shoes? Those too. Oh, I've taken up lots of new hobbies. Like woodwork. Sounds quite harmless. Here's a wooden chair I made. It looks surprisingly like an ordinary chair. Yes, but then I asked myself, why should a chair have legs and not be able to walk? Here, boy. It can walk. Yes, indeed. Oh! <laughs> it doesn't like being sat on. No, th that's the problem with walking chairs. And also, I've been doing some gardening. Gardening? That sounds relatively safe. I asked myself, why should a tulip have leaves? Why not hands? Or even feet? And I gave it a brain. Master. And a voice. Master. What do you think of my gardening, Cedric? This isn't gardening. This is an abomination. Daddy, what's an abomination? That tulip. I do like my hobbies. Frogs! I asked myself, why should a frog have just two eyes? Why not ten? Or twenty-three? Oh, that's enough, dear. They don't care about your silly old hobbies. Yes, I'm forgetting myself. It's your party, darling, and I've arranged a fantastic surprise. What's the surprise? I dread to think. To the top of the tower! <laughs> Granny Thistle loves looking at the stars. Oh, yes. Stars are very pretty. So I asked myself, why do we have to look at the stars from down here? Why not up there in the sky? <laughs> turned into a rocket. Aren't the stars beautiful, Granny? They certainly are, darling. Very nice. Uh, Dad, how do you land this thing? No idea, son. This is magic. I don't have to know what I'm doing. I may not know much about magic, but I do know how to land a rocket. We're back home. And we survived the party. Thank you for landing the rocket, Cedric. My pleasure, Millicent. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. Where to now? Home? No. Let's head to the sun and see what it's made of. Groovy. <laughs> it's fun playing cards with 
with you, Ben and Holly? Yes, we love coming to your house. It's my birthday soon and you can come to my party. That sounds brilliant. You could have a fairy party. Or an elf party. Yes, an elf and fairy party. And all my friends can come dressed up. I could do some party magic. Ooh, yes, please. Lucy, lunchtime. Better hide. Dad can be a bit funny about you two. Mum, Dad, I've decided to have an elf and fairy party for my birthday. That's nice, Lucy. And I've invited Ben Elf and Fairy Princess Holly. Now, Lucy, we've been through this. Elves and fairies aren't really real. Hello, Lucy's dad. <laughs> Hello there. We are. Real. Uh, but but we can't have real elves and fairies at Lucy's birthday party. Why not, Dad? There'll be lots of other children, and they're not used to seeing real elves and fairies. We understand. Yes. See you later, Lucy. Bye. Bye. Holly was going to do some magic at my party. Well, I can do some magic tricks. Watch. Here's a coin. Now it's gone. Oh, what's this behind your ear? Oh, will you do a magic show at my party? Of course I will. Hi, Ben. Hi, Holly. Hi, everyone. Lucy's having an elf and fairy party. Great! I've always wanted to go to a big kid's party. Me too. What shall we wear? What we always wear. After all, we are elves and fairies. <laughs> The thing, real elves and fairies aren't invited. It's just a lot of big children dressed up as elves and fairies. Oh. 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 Lucy, what's the matter? Oh, Mum, I really wanted Ben and Holly to come to my party. Well, I think they can. Just keep them out of sight and away from your dad. Great! Thanks, Mum. I'll go and tell them. As long as it's only Ben and Holly. Ben! Holly! Mum says you can come to the party after all. Hooray! Hooray. Thanks, Thanks, Lucy. Lucy. We can do magic. And play party games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, it was only supposed to be Ben and Holly. So, you don't want us to come? Of course I do. You can all come. I'm sure it will be fine. Hooray! As long as you promise to stay out of sight and away from my dad. We, we promise. Let's put your wings on. <laughs> now you look like a real fairy princess. Lucy, all your friends are here. Oh, goody. Happy birthday, Lucy. <laughs> I like your fairy wings. I like your elf ears. I made them myself. <laughs> Here's a balloon each. Hold tight or they'll fly away. <laughs> Have fun. I'll be back to pick you up after the party. <laughs> I think the coast is clear. Have fun. I'll be back to pick you up after the party. Hello. My goodness, you've all come. Um, welcome. Here's a balloon. Hold on tight or it'll fly away. Whoa. Quick, grab him. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all the lovely party food. Ooh. There's the birthday cake. <laughs> Gaston's going to eat the cake. No, Gaston. Bad, Ladybird. <laughs> That's for later. Come on, everyone. Party time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get started with a bit of a boogie. Yeah, 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 I yeah, wish we yeah, could dance with the yeah, big yeah, children. Yeah, we yeah, promise yeah, to keep yeah, out of sight. Yeah, I can't yeah, help it. Yeah, I have to yeah, boogie. Yeah, yeah. No, Barnaby. Come back. Boogie, boogie, boogie. They're going to see him. Musical statues. When the music stops, yeah, yeah, everyone yeah, freeze. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Katie, you moved. I nearly stepped on this toy. Look. Oh, I'll just pop the toy over here with the rest of the toys. 
What are you doing, Barnaby? Sorry, Lucy's mum. Barnaby, we're supposed to stay here. But I love to boogie. Now, Lucy's dad is going to do some magic tricks. Hooray! Oh, goody. I love magic. It won't be real magic, just magic tricks. What are magic tricks? You'll see. Hello and welcome to the magic show. Ooh. Ooh! You see? That's a magic trick. It's a trick wand. That was really good. My dad's been practising. And now I will make a rabbit come out of my hat. Hey, presto. <laughs> it's Flopsy, my pet rabbit. <laughs> Dad must have borrowed him. Do it again. Yes, do, do it again. again. Uh, I can't. Lucy only has one rabbit. Oh, maybe he needs a bit of help. No, Strawberry. Rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. Oh, another rabbit. Ooh. Rabbity, rabbity, rabbity. And another rabbit. And um, another. And another. And another. Tweety and another. birds. And Tweety birds. Oh. My birds. Where did they come from? Out of your hat. Stop it, Strawberry. But he hasn't done magic jelly yet. It's not a party about magic jelly. Ah, good. There's no more animals in the hat. Magic jelly. Ah, jelly! It's a jelly flood. <laughs> jelly flood. <laughs> Sounds like the children are having fun. Party food. We've got sandwiches, cake and jelly. Oh. I see you already have some jelly. Yes, it just sort of appeared magically. <laughs> Where's Gaston? Oh no, the birthday cake. <laughs> there he is. Naughty Gaston, come here. <laughs> He's stuck in the icing. Don't worry, Gaston, we'll rescue you. Oh, now I'm stuck. Ah, uh -huh. I'm stuck as well. I'm stuck too. <gasps> Time for the cake. Keep still. Pretend to be toys. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Lucy. Lucy. <laughs> now, Lucy, blow out the candles. It might get a bit spitty when she blows the candles out. Don't tell her to blow them all out in one go. Remember to blow them all out in one go. <gasps> <sighs> Don't forget to make a wish. I want a pink unicorn. Strawberry? No. Pink unicorn. Da! Wow, a pink unicorn. <laughs> My wish came true. That's amazing. Uh, right, everyone. Home time. <laughs> Don't forget your party bags. Hello, Yasmin. Did you have a nice time? Yes. Lucy's dad did magic. He's awesome. What are you looking like that for? All right. Out you come. All of you. I thought I made it clear there were to be no real elves and fairies at the party. But as soon as my back is turned, you invite every elf and fairy in the world. <gasps> Where's Jake? He's missing. He must have fallen into a party bag. <sighs> All right, don't panic. Just wait here. Ooh, what's this? Yum! I love cake! Oh, I think Lucy lost one of her toys. Ah, there it is. Thanks, Lucy's dad. Your magic show was great. Yes, everyone said so. Oh, did they? This was my best party ever. I'm glad you had fun, Lucy. And no one really saw your, your little friends. So I suppose everything turned out all right. <laughs> Back to normal, eh? Yes, except for the unicorn. Oh, yes, the, the unicorn. I forgot about that. Don't worry, Dad. We can just keep it in the barn with the cows. <laughs> Today's adventure starts at the Great Elf Tree. Chickens ride west. 
<gasps> oh, my goodness. It's morning. I've got to do my deliveries. Relax, Mr. Elf. It's early. Oh, yes. I love these quiet moments before the day begins. Yes, it's so lovely and peaceful. <laughs> ah, it's the cockerel from the elf farm. The chickens have escaped! We have to round them up. Come on, you chickens. Whoa! Come on, chickens. Come on, come on. Come on, chickens. Come on, choo-choo. Whoa, good. Everything's under control. Thanks for your help, Mr. Elf. Lucky you were still here and not off on your deliveries. Oh, my deliveries! I really am late now. <laughs> Look at the little primroses. So pretty. <laughs> Good delivery. Morning, Mr. Elf. You're a bit late today. Yes, we had a problem with the chickens this morning. Chickens, eh? That reminds me. I really fancy an egg for breakfast. Ah, I didn't bring an egg today. No egg? No problem. I'll just go and get one. Can I come along? Of course. I'd better come too so I can pick a good egg. We'll drive back to the chickens, pick up the egg, load it on the truck, drive back here, and hey, presto, you'll have your egg, Your Majesty. Oh, all that for one egg? It'd be simpler if I had my own chicken. Then I'd get an egg in time for breakfast. <laughs> OK. Bye. Bye. You don't really want a chicken, do you? Of course not. I was joking. <laughs> an egg! The king wants an egg! Does he? We might have a problem there. The chickens aren't laying any eggs. What? Why not? The chickens have run out of food. They've pecked away all the plants. Till all that's left is mud. Yes, if you want a nice flower garden, don't keep chickens. <laughs> Look, there's one little flower left. <laughs> oh, they like eating little flowers the best. <laughs> hey, you cheeky chicken. <laughs> if only there was somewhere else they could live. Oh, Daddy said he'd like chickens at the little castle. Yes, he did sort of say that. It's true. The king said, I want my own chicken. It's the perfect solution. We'll move the chickens to the little castle. OK, everyone, we're moving the chickens west. Saddle up, cowboys. Yahoo! Boys, you're moving chickens. So shouldn't you be called chicken boys? Uh, cowboys sounds better. Can I be a cowgirl? Sure thing, Holly. Here's your hat. <laughs> Wagons roll. Yeehaw! Yahoo! Yahoo! Yippee! -yay, okay! -yay. <laughs> I didn't realise moving chickens was so naughty. The chickens like noise, but we must be careful not to make a sudden loud noise. We don't want a stampede. Sudden loud noise? What, like bang? <laughs> ah, chicken on the loose! <laughs> Whoa! This way, this way! <laughs> Phew! That was close. Now, no more sudden loud noises, Nanny Plum. We've got a long journey ahead of us. Chickens ride west, chickens ride west. Wagons are a rolling, west we are going. Chickens ride west, chickens ride west. We've reached Crooked Creek. What do you mean, Crooked Creek? It's a creek, isn't it? And it's crooked. It's just a little river. Somehow we have to get the chickens to the other side. And chickens don't like crossing water. <laughs> I thought chickens loved water. Have you ever seen a chicken in water? All the time. Swimming up and down, going quack, quack. Look, there's one. <laughs> That's a duck. <sighs> Whatever. Chickens are not ducks and they don't like swimming. Ooh. So what can we do? We'll use an old cowboy trick to get the chickens across. Wait here. What's the old cowboy trick? I don't know, but it's bound to be very clever. Or very silly. But probably funny. 
Ta-da! Told you, he's dressed as Humpty Dumpty. Why is old elf? Why are you dressed as an egg? Chickens like to look after their eggs. So, if they see one floating across the water, they'll follow it. I'm an egg. Come in, chickens. The water's lovely and warm. I'm an egg. They're following the egg. I'm an egg. I'm an egg. That has to be one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. I'm an egg. I'm an egg. I'm an egg. I'm an egg. You see, it's all quite simple when you're an old cow hand like me. <gasps> oh, what's the matter? Haven't you ever seen a cowboy in his underpants before? Wow, the chickens really like pecking up flowers. They're eating machines, leaving nothing but mud. Yes, are you sure the king said he wants chickens at the little castle? That's what Daddy said. I want chickens at the little castle. Very well, then. Saddle up. Chickens ride west. Chickens ride west. Wagons are a rolling. West we are going. We're in the Badlands. Badlands? It's the meadow. We'll stop here for the night. Get the wagons in a circle. Let's keep these chickens safe. Ah, sleeping outdoors with a campfire. Life doesn't get better than this. Unless you're home in bed, watching television. Talking of home, we'd better phone the king. Hello? Hello, King Thistle. We're almost there, but we need to camp out for the night. Wow. How long can it take to deliver one egg? Don't worry, Daddy. You'll have your chicken by the morning. My chicken? What does Holly mean by that? Bedtime, everybody. Nanny, you keep watch. What do I have to do? Keep watching the chickens and do not fall asleep. Righto. Morning, Nanny Plum. How did it go in the night time? Uh, fine. Where are the chickens? Oh, they've gone. Gone? The whole point of watching them was to make sure they didn't go. You never said that. You just said watch them. You watch them wander off into the night? Yes. Oh, all right, cowboys. Let's round up the chickens. Come back, chickens! Chickens, come back! Nanny, remember, no sudden loud noises. We don't want a chicken stampede. All right. You aren't exactly quiet yourself. Ha! Elves are good at being quiet. And, and we're, we're elves! elves. <laughs> Whoops. The chickens are stampeding! <laughs> We'll head them off at the pass. Head them off at the pass? What does that mean? No idea. But they say it in all the cowboy films. The chickens are heading straight for the fairy village. Yeah, chicken stampede! <laughs> Which way did the chickens go? They went that away. Yes, that's what they say in cowboy films as well. They went that away. Ah, <sighs> it's so lovely to wake up to the song of a little bird. <laughs> Good grief! What are those chickens doing here? You said you wanted a chicken, Daddy. I didn't expect you to take me seriously. You're the king. Of course we take you seriously. What are they doing to my flower garden? Eating it, Your Majesty. If you are going to keep chickens, you have to say goodbye to flower gardens. But you can have eggs for breakfast every day. <laughs> and you won't have any problems waking up. <laughs> Hello, Redbeard. Ahoy there, Ben and Holly. 
Are you ready for a day of adventure? Yes, we are. Nanny Plum, me lovely fairy maiden. Are you coming too? Oh, if I must. Ha ha! A fine sunny day such as this is just right for adventure. It started to rain. No adventure today, Mr. Pirate. A rainy day such as this is just right for adventure. Look, there's a rainbow. Ooh. And a rainbow is a pirate's best friend. Why is that? What do you find at the end of a rainbow? A pot of gold. And pirates love gold. Oh, pots of gold at the end of rainbows? That's just a fairy story. Well, you're a fairy, aren't you? Uh, yes, but... Come on, then. Make ready to sail. Ben, you can be cabin boy. Aye, aye, Captain. Polly can be lookout. Aye, aye, Captain. Polly Parrot can be the ship's parrot. Ah, pieces of eight. What about Gaston? Uh, he can be the ship's cat. <laughs> uh, cats don't normally bark, do they? Well, no. Gaston, can you say meow? <laughs> Sounds like a meow to me. Hop aboard, Gaston. <laughs> and Nanny Plum can be... Oh, wait a moment. What is it? You're a woman. Yes. Sailors say it's bad luck to have a woman on board. Bad luck to have a woman on board? How can you say such a thing in this day and age? You're right. It's probably a lot of old sailors' nonsense. Welcome aboard. What's my job, then? You just stand there and look pretty. Huh. Now let's set sail for the end of the rainbow and find that pot of gold. Hurrah! 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 Yeah, hurrah. Big clouds ahead. I can't see the rainbow anymore. Just keep heading for where it was. That's thunder. A storm? Oh, dear. Can we go home now? Go home? The adventure's just beginning. Ah, he's in the Ooh. Ooh. How do you stay still, Redbeard? You just need to get your sea legs. That's all. It's a good job none of you get seasick. Oh, my tummy. Nanny Plum, you've gone green. <laughs> Man overboard! Oh, sorry, I mean woman overboard! Well... Catch hold of this life belt! <laughs> oh, I fell in the sea. It was horrible. Perhaps those sailors were right. It is bad luck having a woman on board. Bad luck for the woman. I just want to get off this rocking boat and onto solid ground. Land ahoy! Straight ahead! Ah, a little island. Ah, oh, it's so nice to stand on something that isn't moving. Redbeard, do islands normally have fins? Not as a rule, no. What about eyes? Hardly ever. It's lovely being on dry land. Uh, I think you should come back now. No, I want to stay here. Pick me up on the way home. Nanny Plum, hurry! I'm not leaving this island. I wouldn't exactly call that an island. Why not? Because it's a fish and a whopping big one. It's Big Bad Furry. Ah! Help me! Don't worry, you're in no danger as long as he doesn't think you're food. Like a fly or something. Ah! Nanny does look like a fly. Ah! I'm not a fly! I'm not a fly! Ah! Get away! Don't let Barry... Flap your wings so much, Nanny. Fly faster, Nanny. Oh, nanny, don't look so like a fly, will you? Ah! Ah! Nanny, catch hold of the hook. Oof. Now she looks.
looked a bit like a worm on a hook. Ooh, fish like eating worms. I'm not a worm. I'm not a worm. Whoops. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea to use a fishing rod. Ah! Hang on, Danny. I'm pulling you in. Ah! And how's me sweet darling? Not having a very good day, are you? Not having a good day? Not having a good day? A fish does try to eat me. Yep. Those sailors were definitely right about the woman on board bad luck stuff. Fog! Coming towards us! Fog? That's bad. Can we go home now? No! We've got more adventuring to do. I can see lights. It looks like another ship. Why, blow me down! That'd be the ship of my friend, Captain Squid. Ahoy there, Captain Squid! Funny, there's no one on deck. It's very quiet. Hello! Hello! Anyone home? Look, there's a meal on the table. It's still hot, but there's no one here. Meal on the table, but the boat's empty. This is certainly a mystery. Ooh. No one will never, ever know what happened to poor old Captain Squid. A mystery that will never be solved. Here's a note. Gone to bury treasure, back in five minutes. Oh, that solves it then. So, where do you think Captain Squid is? Hmm, where would you bury treasure around here? The end of the rainbow! The pot of gold at the end of the rainbow! That'll be the gold Captain Squid's burying! Come on, let's get after him! It's not getting any closer. That's the thing about rainbows. When you walk towards them, they go further away. We're not going to walk there. We're going to fly. Fly? But you're an elf. You don't have any wings. Yes, but I'm an elf with a parrot. Ah! He's a mate. Saddle up, shipmates. There's the pot of gold. And there be Captain Squid, burying treasure. Redbeard, this is my treasure, not yours. How did you find me? We just followed the rainbow. Ah, rainbows. They're a pirate's worst enemy. No, they're not. Rainbows are a pirate's best friend. Depends whether you're burying treasure or finding it. Good point. So, anyway, don't let us stop you, Captain Squid. You get back to burying your treasure. Thank you kindly, Redbeard. I was just about to bury it here. Hang on. You can't trick me that easily. No one must see where I bury my treasure. You've all got to close your eyes. Thank you. OK, you can look now. So, where did you bury it? Why, it's right over there. Ha, <laughs> ha. You're trying to trick me again. Oh, you won't get it out of me that easy. The rainbow's moving. It's gone to the treasure. Ah, blasted rainbows. Don't worry, Captain Squid. We won't dig it up, will we, Redbeard? No, of course not. Is it home time yet? Yes, I think it is. Today's adventure is over. And I'd be honoured to take you all home on my yacht. That sounds a nice way to travel. Yacht? That's a rowing boat. Plenty of room if we all squeeze up. <laughs> Where can I sit? Wait a minute. Are you a woman? Yes. Oh, bad luck having a woman on board. It's all right. Turns out it's bad luck for the woman, not for us. Oh, in that case, welcome aboard, me lovely. <laughs> Oh, no! It's rocking worse than Redbeard's boat! Fun, isn't it? Yes! That's what being an elf pirate is all about! Having fun! By the way, none of you get seasick, do you? Oh, 